Okey dah. Uh, budak aku lah. Saya perlu mengingatkan kamu dahulu ya. Uh, Okey. Untuk masa lima minit sebelum kelas mula, saya akan bertutur dalam bahasa Melayu. Um, lepas tu saya akan bertutur dalam bahasa Inggeris uh, supaya kamu lebih memahami apakah yang perlu saya sampaikan. Boleh? Okey. Um, oh, budak aku. Bahagian kod ni ya. QR code ni, course imbas ah. Kamu perlu mengimbas code ni untuk mendapatkan jawapan. Ya, yeah. you have to scan this code for your answer. All answers provided. And especially for those students who are from other zone, your novel reference also in this code. So you can scan this code. Where is the code uh, in your notes? Yeah, make sure you either request notes or you download yourself. Just make sure you scan this code for all answers. Okay? and other zone novel. But for a Selangor in KL, your novel is all provided in the notes itself. Okay? Sudah disediakan. Okay, budakku. Masih ingat tak? Okay, kamu mungkin tak ingat. Untuk bahagian format, saya hanya akan fokus dalam kertas pertama dan kertas kedua. Kertas ketiga dan kertas keempat um, pada cikgu diri sendiri kerana merupakan ujian lisan. Okay? Tahu tak bahagian ujian lisan? Speaking and listening. Hmm. Okay, your oral test. Lepas tu, um, kertas pertama ni melupakan um, penulisan karangan. Maksudnya, dua jam, kamu perlu menulis karangan. Uh, dua bahagian. Yeah. AB. Um, karangan pendek, karangan panjang. Um, tetapi kita tak panggil panjang lah, kita panggil karangan umum. Means in general. Understand? The next one. Uh, bahagian kedua, kertas dua ya. Kertas dua, bahagian pertama, bahagian A. Kita ada beberapa bahagian um, yang utama, yang paling penting tu merupakan tata bahasa. Yang pertama tu morfologi. Um, ada tak sesiapa yang tak tahu apakah maksud morfologi? Kalau kamu merupakan uh, pelajar lama, maksudnya pelajar kelas saya, kamu sudah pasti tahu morfologi. Kita akan buat soalan morfologi um, pada setiap bulan. Morfologi ni merupakan golongan kata. It means... Uh, Uh, whatever word, it will be under morphology. For example, contoh, ha, kata nama, lepas tu kata kerja, uh, all this kind of word, it will be under morphology. Faham? Lepas tu, uh, kita ada bahagian sintaksis. Bahagian sintaksis ini merupakan struktur ayat. Anything relates to sentence structure, it will be under sintaksis. Okay? Struktur ayat. Apakah maksud struktur ayat? Yang paling senang kan kita ada um, ayat biasa, ayat songsang, lepas tu subjek predikat, uh, ayat tunggal, ayat masmu, ayat pasif, ayat aktif. Yang ni kita panggil sintaksis. Mereka akan menguji apa-apa soalan yang pernah kamu belajar uh, sama ada di sekolah rendah atau di sekolah menengah. Okay? Lepas tu penyuntingan ni kan saya sudah buat perungan um, kesalahan. Tetapi kita ada empat jenis kesalahan. Saya akan jelaskan nanti. Lepas tu Okey, budakku. Bahagian keempat ni, bahagian BMS. Saya nak tanya, ada tak sesiapa yang pernah buat soalan BMS di sekolah? Maksudnya guru sekolah mereka telah mengajar bahagian BMS. Sepatutnya kamu tahu, uh, bahagian BMS tak susah. Kamu cuma perlu menukar bahasa klasik kepada bahasa moden. Okey, boleh ya? Klasik, moden. Faham? Daripada kan mereka dapatkan petikan ini, Daripada prosa tradisional. Hmm. Prosa tradisional. Kalau pelajar tingkatan 4, prosa tradisional kamu merupakan kepimpinan melalui teladan. Ingat tak? Hmm. Kalau pernah belajar, memang baik. Kalau tak pernah, uh, cikgu di sekolah akan ajar lagi. Okay? Yang ni perlu, uh, okay, in English, huh? you need to do translation. Yep. You have to translate from classic to modern language. Modern language, it means normal usage of BM, which means your imbuhan, your tata bahasa and everything in normal way. Understand? Lepas tu, bahagian peribahasa. Uh, bahagian peribahasa, ada tak sesiapa yang ingin berputus asa? Hmm. Kamu tak nak buat soalan peribahasa, kamu nak dapat kosong sahaja. Anyone in this class, you want to let go peribahasa, you just want to get zero mark. Hmm. If yes, go ahead. Yeah, I won't stop you. But actually, peribahasa, you can get all of the notes from your textbook. Mm. Setiap peribahasa yang diuji dalam peperiksaan, kamu boleh dapat daripada buku teks. Mm. Okay, mesti ingat ya. Kalau kamu merupakan seorang budak yang rajin, dapatkan jawapan daripada buku teks. Boleh ha? Faham? Lepas tu, buku teks. 
Tingkatan 4 dan tingkatan 5. Kalau boleh, tingkatan 1 hingga 3 juga perlu tahulah. Lepas tu bahagian B ini merupakan hmm. soalan pemahaman. Apakah maksud soalan pemahaman? Ha? Kamu hanya perlu jawab jawapan berdasarkan petikan. Hmm. Adakah setiap soalan hanya untuk uh, menyalin jawapan? Tak. Kamu takkan menyalin jawapan sahaja kerana ada soalan kebat. Okay? Pemahaman ni ya. Kita ada umum. Umum ni maksudnya uh, petikan daripada bahan biasa sama ada surat khabar ataupun sumber internet. Mm. Umum umum means general. In case you are still confused, what is umum actually? Umum is general. We can get this um passage from either our newspaper or our internet. Yeah, whatever people wrote, we can take it as a reference and then for you to answer question. Okay. So umum in general uh, apa? Ataupun internet. Boleh. Lepas tu kita ada petikan komsas. Petikan komsas ni, okay budakku. Saya perlu kamu, um, yang apa tu, ah, prosel tradisional, tak kira. Kerana prosel tradisional ni, dari aspek BMS, ah, BMS ni. Ya, yeah, tak ada kaitan dengan petikan. Okay, jangan tulis ya. Yeah. Uh, cancel it. Lepas tu, budakku, tahu tak apakah maksud puisi? Hmm. Tahu tak apakah maksud puisi? I think most of you know it. But if you can answer, it's perfect. Yes, sini terima kasih. You all know, right? You cannot expect me to speak on my own throughout the process of seminar. I would want to be Dora teacher. Okay? Okay, Daya. Okay, puisi tradisional. Puisi maksudnya poem. Tetapi kan kita ada puisi tradisional dan puisi modern. Sajak ni merupakan puisi modern. Okey, puisi tradisional kita ada apa? Dari sekolah rendah kan kita ada pantun. Lepas tu kita ada gurindam, kita ada syair. Lepas tu di tingkatan tiga, hmm, saya tak pasti kamu masih ingat tak seloka santap istiadat di tingkatan tiga? Ya, masih ingat tak yang tu untuk uh, mengkritik um, jamuan kebesaran? Um, Golongan dari istana. Yes. Terima kasih, Sanjana. Terima kasih. Next. So, yang tu kita panggil seloka. Seloka ni is more for what? Criticism. Yep. Understand? Kritikan. Okay. Sedia so, yang? Lepas tu, wah, cikgu. Yang ni cuma saling jawapan nak. Ya, yeah, betul. Tetapi masih ada soalan kebat ya. Lepas tu, novel. Eh, beraku. Uh, novel tingkatan empat. Saya hanya akan ajar novel Lieutenant Adnan. Jadi dalam nota ni sudah ada nota untuk bahagian Lieutenant Adnan. Budak dari zon yang lain, uh, jawapan dalam QR. Boleh ya? Dalam QR. You scan the code on your own. Boleh? Okay? okay, lepas tu, novel budakku. Kamu pernah buat soalan tak? Yang pertama, kita ada dua jenis soalan. Tak sama dengan tingkatan tiga. Tingkatan tiga cuma satu soalan, lepas tu sepuluh maka kan? Tetapi tingkatan empat dan lima, Maksudnya um, sesi SPM, ha? mereka ada soalan A dan soalan B. Soalan A ni, hmm, empat maka sahaja, dari manakah kamu dapat jawapan? Petikan. Hmm. Okay, saling jawapan daripada petikan. Okay, fahamnya. Yang ni kita ada maka, uh, empat maka. Di mana kamu akan dapat empat maka penuh? Hmm. Tak perlu hafal apa-apa pun, kamu boleh dapat empat maka. Okay, you don't need to memorize, no need, and it is a full score. Why? Because just copy paste answer from your passage. And this novel can be either from four or from five, and from different zone. That's why this one you don't need to memorize nothing. Okay, lepas tu bahagian B ni ah sama dengan tiga a tiga. Apa yang perlu kamu buat? Soalan komsas. Tetapi soalan komsas ni hmm, perlu ingatnya termasuk kebat. Mereka akan mengubah suai uh, soalan tu. Mereka akan mengubah suai. Lepas tu, you know what's mengubah suai? Modify. Modify and it becomes kebat. But actually your answer still based on your komsas. Yeah, based on literature answer. Which means simple one, your peristiwa. Faham tak apakah maksud peristiwa? Your storyline. Faham? Lepas tu yang ni ada enam maka. That's all for now. Dan lepas tu 
Okey, yang terakhir. Bahagian C merupakan rumusan. Uh, rumusan dalam bahasa Inggeris pernah dengar tak? Uh, summary. Kalau kamu pernah dengar summary, it's perfect. Tetapi BM ada format hmm, untuk bahagian rumusan. Uh, saya jelaskan dahulu ya. Kita ada empat perenggan. Yang ni kalau boleh dapat maka melebihi 25. Hmm. Kan kita ada 30, kalau boleh melebihi 25. Hmm. Nanti saya akan ajar bahagian rumusan. Hmm. Saya akan ajar teknik untuk menjelaskan soalan rumusan. Uh, tetapi bahagian tata bahasa, saya hanya memberitahu teknik untuk menjawab sahaja. Okay? Dah ya? 3, 2, 1. Karangan pada hari ini, saya takkan buat um, karangan yang lengkap kerana tak cukup masa. Tetapi teknik untuk menulis karangan akan disediakan. Dah? Okey, ujian lisan, uh, kita ada dua bahagian. Uh, yang pertama tu ujian bertutur, speaking. Lepas tu ujian mendengar, listening. Um, maka 70, 30. Jadi maka total dalam kertas VM, kita ada 300. Ya. Yeah. Jadi kalau ada sesiapa, jumlah maka kurang daripada 150 sudah pasti gagal dalam PM. Hmm. If you score more than 150, over 300, for sure you fail BM. You might ask me, teacher, isn't it where you get 40 marks to score? And 40 marks is just to pass. But when you enter uni, you need to retake BM. So I assume nobody wants to retake BM. So our mark would be 50, which is a credit. Ya. Yep. Boleh? Faham? Understand? Settle lah. Credit. This is our aim. Especially for those um super weak in BM. But if you are very strong, then of course this is not your aim. You do your calculation. Yep. And then you will go and target how much do you get. Hmm. Settle lah. Ya? 3, 2, 1. Dan. Ah, budak kuat. Sebelum kita meneruskan bahagian karangan, ada satu bahagian yang perlu kamu tahu. Bahagian kata kunci. Ada tak sesiapa dalam kelas ini, kamu menganggap kata kunci langsung tak penting? <laughs> Sorry to say that. You are wrong. Yo. Cakap uh, hal pandai kita ini. Nanti kamu jawab soalan. Okay? Um, kerana kalau ada sesiapa yang tidak mementingkan kata kunci, maksudnya ada risiko kamu tidak dapat menjawab soalan peperiksaan. Tetapi hari ini saya akan bagi jawapan. Uh, kalau boleh kamu bagi juga lah. Okay? Hmm, kita saling belajar. Hmm. Sekarang, kalau ada sesiapa yang ada jawapan untuk bahagian FCUK, boleh tulis jawapan. Empat kata kunci yang utama dalam penulisan, maksudnya dalam kertas BN, merupakan FCUK. Uh, bahagian empat hingga sepuluh cuma merupakan tambahan. Hmm. Bolehkah kamu memberitahu saya FCUK? Ayah, sini C bukan ciri. Ah, cakap hal kosong maka. Okay, F ni bukan format kita nak kata kunci, bukanlah teknik untuk menulis karangan. Hmm. What do you think FCUK is for our keyword, main keyword in BM writing? Hmm, okay. Ayah, Hana bukan fakta. Hana, fakta tu jenis karangan. Ah, Jarod, kosong maka. Okay, Zishan Berto. Uh, eh, Mr. Wong, bukan fokus. Bukan fokus. Fokus tu merupakan apa ya? Untuk cari rumusan. Tu kita panggil fokus. Okay, cakap hal salah. Ayah, sorry tak. Bukan faedah. Faedah tu merupakan kebaikan. Ya. Yeah. Apakah F2? Itu bukan fakta. Hmm, Mr. Chow betul, Daniel betul. Eh, Daniel, mengapakah ada untuk? Untuk tu salah-salah. Uh, hmm, boleh aku mesti ingat ya. Jangan sentuh fakta. Fakta merupakan apa? Fakta merupakan jenis karangan. Ah, okay. Itu betul. Sama kita, eh, sama kita. Format tu untuk menulis karangan. Ah, yang perlu kita cari. F ni merupakan faktor. Lepas tu cara. Lepas tu usaha. Lagi. Kesan. Ah, ah saya juga bagi fokus deh. Ah, budakku, fokus equivalent to keyword. Yes. That's why fokus itself is not keyword. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Fokus equivalent to keyword synonym. But then when we want keyword from you, fokus itself is not. Yeah. Because I cannot tell you to like, oh, cari a uh, tulis fokus tentang dan salah lah. Betul? Hmm. Understand, huh? Okay. For the synonym, I will write for you. But there is only few words that I want to ask later. Okay? Yang pertama, faktor ni merupakan, eh, my dear, I want to double check, huh? If any one of you, huh, your BM is really terrible, huh? And you need to continue as well, okay? Because faktor 
if you really don't understand in BM, you can write down in English, which is reason and factor. Okay, but I won't write down, you just write on your own. Okay, I will explain, you write on your own. Eh? So, kita ada sebab, lepas tu punca, lepas tu cara. Okay, cara usaha memang senang kan? Dan kita ada langkah, kita ada tindakan. Lepas tu, ada satu perkataan yang perlu saya tahu. Ada tak sesiapa yang tahu perkataan ini yang dipanggil pendekatan? Hmm, ada tak sesiapa? Kamu tahu maksud pendekatan? If you know this, not bad, quite smart. Hmm, what do you think pendekatan is? Teacher, you stupid man. Do you see? Cara usaha, of course, it is cara and usaha. So, make sure one thing, bear in mind, ah, pendekatan is not very near but it equivalent to um, solution, okay? And of course, some of you, if you are smart enough, you can do this called Jalan Penyelesaian. Yeah, this would just pop up in my mind right now. Penyelesaian, okay? Solution, okay? Then, uh, for those uh, who cannot rush um, to finish everything later, once I finish certain part, you screenshot, okay? But of course, don't screenshot too much. Because after that, you will just throw into your dustbin, okay? Lepas tu, kesan, kesan merupakan, oh, kesan saya cuma nak tahu satu perkataan BM mula dengan A. Apakah perkataan itu? Yes. What do you think? Your answer is. Okay, nice. Daniel, terima kasih. Lishan betul. Ashley betul. Nice. I only want BM word because English is too easy. Yup, senjana betul lah ni. Hmm, kerana... Uh, impak implikasi memang daripada perkataan Inggeris kan? Kan tu kata pinjaman. Ya, yep, Sushen Bantoh. Terima kasih. Kalau kamu boleh memberitahu saya perkataan ini. Nice. Yep. Akibat. Impak implikasi. Uh, tetapi budakku mesti ingat. Kan kita ada dua jenis kesan. Sama ada kesan positif ataupun kesan negatif. Di mana kita ada perkataan yang lain untuk menggantikan Kebaikan, keburukan. Okay, kesan positif, kesan negatif. Jadi, kalau ada soalan karangan yang tanya uh, tentang kesan penggunaan, kamu boleh tulis sama ada kebaikan atau keburukan ataupun kedua-dua. Boleh? Hmm. Lepas tu, eh, bolehkah saya dapat perkataan yang lain untuk menggantikan kebaikan selain kesan positif, faedah dan manfaat? Ada tak sesiapa yang ada jawapan untuk menggantikan perkataan kebaikan? Hmm. Okay, sini terima kasih. Lishan betul. Yep. Uh, Lishan kedua-dua pun betul. Nice. Yeah, agak senang. Uh, Lishan betul. Yep. And then, okay. Ashley betul. Shensheng betul. Nice. Um, nanti saya ada, um, ada satu perkataan yang perlu jelaskan. Eh? Okay. Kelebihan. Oh, tetapi kelas ni, oh, tak ada pelajar yang bagi saya perkataan yang lain yang dipanggil kemaslahatan. Pernah dengar perkataan ni kan? Kemaslahatan. Hmm. Tetapi mesti ingat, hmm, perkataan ni cuma untuk pengetahuan kamu. Ya, mengapakah perlu tahu perkataan ini? Dalam soalan rumusan, ada perkataan ini, kita perlulah tahu maksudnya. Hmm. Bukan untuk tulis dalam karangan. Ya. Lepas tu ada satu yang dipanggil kepentingan. Okay. Tahu tak apakah maksud kepentingan? Hmm. Everybody knows that in English we call importance, my right? Uh, why we just want to know something? But some of you might be very curious. Huh, teacher, I thought it is importance. How it linked with our kebaikan? My dear, when something is very um, useful or it brings benefit to you, it means it is quite important. And when something is very important to you, it means it brings benefit to you. Understand? It is linked. And because my kepentingan has no extra friend, so too bad, too sad, we will link with kebaikan. Okay? Understand? Huh? I know some of you will confuse the church. I don't think it makes sense. It's because you don't know the hidden meaning. Yeah. Okay? Isi tersirat. Boleh ya? Lepas tu, keburukan. Bolehkah saya dapatkan um, sinonim untuk keburukan selain kesan negatif? I need other answers. Yep. To replace keburukan. What do you think? I think keburukan is quite easy lah. Mm, very easy. I gave you kesan negatif already ma. So any one of you have the answer? Basically, it is um, opposite from our kebaikan. Any one of you, if you can think of it, smart. Okay. Sushen, terima kasih. 
uh, also KEL, and one more is um, KEK. Yeah, KEL and KEK. Oh, all of you only know kebaikan. Ah. Ayah. So, kita panggil <coughs> kelemahan. Lepas tu, ada satu lagi. Yes, actually, terima kasih. Ijo betul. Shensheng betul. Okay, I want to ask uh, any one of you googling. Ada sesuatu? Ya, yeah, Google. Ayah, Yuki, bukan keterukan. Ayo, kita tak ada perkataan terikutkan. Oh my God. Teruk tu, adjective ma, tak ada perkataan keterukan. Okay, teacher not laughing. Teacher very nice one. Okay, so kita panggil kekurangan. Ya. Yeah. Faham? Boleh ya? Lepas tu, teruskan ha. Per oh, oh, peranan. Ada tak sesiapa yang boleh memberitahu saya apakah maksud peranan? Hmm. Saya nak tahu apakah maksud peranan Yes, ini betul, terima kasih Lepas tu ada tak sesiapa uh, Okay, Lishan betul Yes, Ijo betul Yes, Brandon betul nah, Suzy betul, thanks So you see, uh, all of you actually quite smart one. It's just that some of you You never answer when you feel not confident hmm. I think so in my class you just answer No worry, I won't judge you, okay So Lishan betul, terima kasih It is our role, our characteristics. Okay, you know your teacher is very lazy. So yeah, I will just write role. Then next, the M word is tanggung jawab. This is the exact synonym, tanggung jawab. Because some of the kids, they might give me, um, okay, this class I did like, but the morning class, they, uh, I mean the Chinese class they give me, which is uh, characteristics equivalent to perwatakan. Okay. Perwatakan characteristics and then understand settle mm. which means what is your role and if some of you might ask teacher does it equivalent to uh, our langka my dear langka is like way what are you supposed to do um all of you might say teacher isn't it same but for different questions sometimes it is different yeah if i ask you peranan ibu bapa dalam mendidik anak-anak and I replace with langka ibu bapa untuk mendidik anak-anak. I can't what. So that's why. Okay, understand? Huh? Lepas tu, masalah, everybody knows it is a problem. So can you give me the synonym for masalah? Hmm, synonym untuk masalah. Oh, yo, okay. Lebih syah. Nice, thanks. Um, ayah, hena, hena. Salah. Brandon betul, terima kasih. Okay, jarak kosong maka. Jarak tu bahasa pasal lah ni, weh. Salah. Eh, saya nak tanya ah, hmm, mengapakah setiap pelajar bukan sahaja kelas ini oh, kelas tadi juga mereka bagi saya perkataan isu ah, budakku kamu tahu tak maksud isu isu bukan masalah isu cuma merupakan satu topik yang dibincangkan ya yeah, it is just a topic it is not a problem like um isu amalan membaca ya yeah, it's just a topic yes it's not a problem okay ah, right by the side okay isu sama dengan topik hmm Bukan masalah. Hanya sesi ke kerti. Hmm. Yo, yes boleh. Hmm. Yang tu boleh ya. Okay, masalah ni kita ada apa dia saya tengok ya. Uh, saya dapatkan jawapan daripada dua budak kuat lah dulu. Kesusahan dan kesulitan. Okay, Sanjiana yang tu boleh. Tetapi yang tu juga merupakan perkataan yang um, perlu saya jelaskan nanti. Okay, yang pertama kesusahan dan kesulitan lepas tu oh i thought some of you will give me this word start from h mm, i thought this is the first word that you all will give me but no way mm, never mind okay sini terima kasih kalau saya nak satu perkataan mula dengan r ah ya sanjana betul lishan betul terima kasih sanjana thanks yep okay some more, some more, what else, what else? Hmm. Kerana tadi sining bagi saya halangan, eh halangan pula ni, cabaran. Mengapakah saya tidak tulis um, cabaran di atas? Kerana cabaran boleh dianggap sebagai perkataan negatif ataupun positif. When people say take up the challenge, the challenge sometimes can be positive or negative. Yeah, it doesn't mean when people say challenge, it equivalent to negative thing. It is not a problem, but something to motivate people. Okay? Yep, sini next one is correct, ya. Yeah? Lepas tu, halangan. 
rintangan. Ah, yang ni memang merupakan satu masalah yang menghalang kamu daripada uh, mengambil ataupun menunaikan sesuatu. Yeah, it is some uh, obstacles to stop it from like moving forward. Okay, cabaran sama ada positif ataupun negatif. Either one. Can ya? Then next one, ciri-ciri. Oh, oh. Me, I know what is ciri-ciri actually. Now you know why peranan I don't write characteristics. Hmm. Apakah maksud ciri-ciri? Kalau yang ada sinonim, boleh bagi saya juga. Hmm. Okay, Lucia, nice. Terima kasih. Thanks. Can you give me another word in pure BM? Hmm. Because there is one word in English. Yes, Lucia, terima kasih. Lucia, betul. Ya, yep. lagi siapa yang ada jawapan? Uh, perkataan English mula dengan KRI. Ya, yeah, perkataan BM mula dengan SI. Kalau ada sesiapa yang tahulah. Yang ni, in English, memang characteristics. Tertut. Okay. Okay, Sanjana betul. Ido betul. Okay. Fatih? Yes, in English, my right? BM eh? Hmm. Okay, BM, BM. Eh, jangan bagi saya karakter lah. Ah, jangan bagi saya K-R, K-A-R-E-K lah. Ya. Ah, jangan, jangan, jangan. So, BM, sama ada kamu bagi saya sifat, Ataupun Inggeris, kita ada perkataan yang dipanggil kriteria. Hmm. Mungkin kamu boleh bagi saya tanda juga. Hmm. It is a sign. Okay? Boleh? Dah ya? Lepas tu, oh oh, fungsi. I know in English is function. How about BM? BM, there is one friend. Ya, ada satu kawan kepada fungsi. Listen smart. Terima kasih. Nice. So, fungsi ni merupakan... Function my right in English, which is what is the usage? Hmm, kegunaan. Ah, budakku, kegunaan ialah fungsi. Penggunaan merupakan proses menggunakan sesuatu. Jangan bagi tahu saya. Eh, jigo, how about penggunaan? Penggunaan is the process of using something. Okay. Okay, like pengguna is user. Ah, can I? Okay, Fatih. Ah, uh, kalau fungsi merupakan peranan. Okay, saya tanya ya. Hmm, apakah fungsi air? Can I write apakah peranan air? Kind of write, can I? Then if I ask peranan ibu bapa, can I write apakah fungsi ibu bapa? Yeah, this is the reason why I don't write peranan uh, for fungsi. Yeah, because sometimes uh, we can use, sometimes we can't. Uh, okay. Lepas tu, panduan. Ada tak sesiapa yang boleh memberitahu saya apakah maksud panduan? Hmm, you think teacher so kind, I ask for meaning first. Apakah maksud panduan? Saya nak tahu. Jangan beritahu saya, hey, cikgu, you know panduan? Panduan nak? And panduan is not driving. Pandu then is drive lah, okay? Memandu. Panduan, apakah maksudnya? Eh, memang ada pelajar, memang tak ada orang. Okay, sini boleh terima. Yup. Uh, okay, Shenshen betul, Lishen betul. Okay, Sanjiana, terima kasih. Betul. Uh, panduan is a guide, is an instruction, is a direction. Okay, means we have to follow the thing. But is that um, langka? No. Yes, Lewisha. Nice. Okay. Yes, Ijo. It's something like rules for us to obey. Uh, I won't say to obey, but to follow. Yeah. Because something for us to um obey, then it is peraturan. Ah, panduan tak semestinya peraturan. It is just act as the guidance. Okay. okay. Just act as a guidance. Ah. Okay. It is just a guide. Hmm. Uh, ayo, my, my kid, what is your name? Your name is bored people. Okay. Cara-cara tak boleh. Cara-cara is that you list down the way for me to carry out. Ah, panduan is just, oh, I can do like this. Oh, yes, I understand. Ah, like this. Like petunjuk. You know, all this point is not from me first. Ah. I will write the point from student first. Then only I top up if you want never give me. Okay. Rujukan. And then... So far is like this. So, apakah perkataan yang boleh untuk uh, menggantikan panduan? Pernah dengar perkataan bimbingan? Hmm. Okay, heard before. So, my board people is not cara-cara. Ha? Lepas tu, kalau kamu nak tahu, ada satu perkataan lagi yang sangat 
pendek tiga huruf sahaja. Tiga huruf sahaja. Langsung bukan satu masalah. Mula dengan T. Ada tak sesiapa yang ada jawapan? Mula dengan T. If you know this, you smart. Tiga huruf. Okay, saya bagi satu perkataan lagi ya, yang dipanggil pegangan. Like a prinsip that we are holding on. Satu perkataan lagi, pernah dengar tip, tip, tip. Hmm. It's like a tips. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yang ini kita panggil panduan. Okay, like panduan penggunaan sesuatu, tip penggunaan sesuatu. Okay, it's not the money that we tips you. Okay, it's not, ya. Yeah? Seterusnya. Uh oh, yang ni sudah siapkan dalam peperiksaan bahagian um, kata kunci saya akan mengatakan yang ni lebih penting daripada menghafal karangan. Ya, mengetahui kehendak soalan lebih penting daripada menghafal karangan. Okay, if you do not agree, then you continue to uh, memorize your essay lah. Ha. I won't stop you because you have time, ma, right? I have no time. Ma. Ha, okay, tak nah, ya. Yeah. Kertas pertama, biar kita tengok ya. Kertas pertama kan kita kata tadi, um, kita ada karangan. Ah, karangan, dua karangan. Karangan pendek, karangan umum. Karangan pendek ni, biar kita, oh Anderson, oh, oh ya yeah, ho. Oh. Anderson, your hand cannot write, I forget already, sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, Yang tak sempat, ataupun yang budakku yang tak boleh tulis ha, tangan patah tu, ah, ha. uh, you can screenshot, okay? Because I suddenly remember, yeah. If any one of you you want, you can't follow. You let me know because I think I'm very slow already here today. Mm, okay, Lovinya lah, tak kawan kamu tangan patah. Okay, teacher not laughing. Teacher very kind. Dah three, two, one. Next one, karangan pendek ni. Ah, jerut saya tahu. <laughs> okay, karangan ni ya. Karangan pendek saya cuma nak beritahu teknik saya bagi nanti kita akan buat bagaimana kita kita menulis um ayat. Lepas tu, orang yang lama kan kita tahu setiap karangan. Sama ada pendek ataupun yang panjang, kita perlu ses tulis sesuatu. Apa kan tulislah, cari sesuatu yang dipanggil T, K, K dan F. Kalau ada sesiapa yang masih tak boleh menjawab soalan ini, maafkan cikgu. Cikgu nak memarahi kamu. Yep. Kalau ada siapa yang masih tak tahu TKK dan FA, you better go and get your previous notes and write 100 times, okay? So TKK dan FA, yeah. today I will be quite kind, okay? I won't force you. Only for today, two hours. So topic, kata kunci. <coughs> Lepas tu, format. Okay, dah ya? Okay, Yoki betul, Daniel betul, Ijo betul. Nice student. Ya, yeah. memang orang yang lihat. Lama. Come. Okay. Um, budakku, so, uh, bukan soalan. Um, langkah pertama, untuk menulis apa-apa karangan, sentiasa ingat baca arahan. Kerana um, kadang-kadang arahan akan berubah. Mesti baca arahan sebelum menulis apa-apa ataupun menjawab soalan. Mesti ingat ya. Baca arahan. Lepas tu kamu akan mendapati sesuatu. Eh, cikgu yang ni terlalu senang lah. Saya pun tahulah. Tak perlu baca. Oh, sorry. What if they change the words at last minute? Ah. Terutamanya bahagian ni. Patah perkataan. Mereka mengatakan minimum 150. Tetapi budak kukala boleh um, tulis maksimum sahaja 200. Tetapi mesti ingat, jangan tulis melebihi 200. Banyak cikgu yang akan menghalang kamu daripada menulis ah, 200 ataupun lebih. Boleh? Lepas tu, bahagian 200 patah perkataan perenggan. Um, biasanya sekarang, banyak cikgu yang akan memanggil kamu tulis empat perenggan. Ya, empat perenggan. Tetapi biasanya saya akan panggil pelajar tulis lima perenggan. Mengapa? Kerana isi agak penting. Ya, isi agak penting. Uh, empat puluh patah perkataan untuk setiap perenggan. Um, Optimum. Ya, yeah, optimum. Optimum maksudnya just nice. Ya, yeah, kang-kang hao. Okay. Lepas tu, eh, cikgu. Yang ni, kita kan ada format yang dipanggil pemimpin negara. Uh, topik pemimpin negara, ya yeah, betul. Tetapi, ada format tak? Tak ada. Maksudnya, karangan biasa. Seterusnya, kata kunci dekat mana? Kata kunci dekat mana? Kalau ada soalan yang tak ada kata kunci, apakah yang perlu kamu buat? 
atau tak mengapakah saya perlu senaraikan kata kunci tadi untuk kegunaan sekarang? Yuk. Kerana kalau soalan tak ada, FC UK. Yang paling penting. Okay. FC UK untuk memastikan saya mempunyai isi untuk ditulis. Okay. Dan ah, sekarang, ah cikgu, tetapi saya tak tahu, eh, saya cuma tahu pemimpin negara. Oh. Yalah, budakku, soalan peperiksaan takkanlah begitu kejam. They are not that um cruel. So, they treat us quite nice. So, where do you know what are you supposed to write? We will move to our content. Yeah, from the material provided. Let's check, ya. Yeah? Nah, budakku, nampak tak ni? Um, kan kita ada topik pemimpin, pemimpin, lepas tu. Bolehkah kamu berikan saya kata kunci yang disediakan berdasarkan perbualan tersebut? Yep. Based on the conversation, can you identify the keyword for me? My dear, I want to ask her before I proceed. Any one of you cannot understand my BM? Yeah, it's a really super simple BM. Ah. Hmm. Ijo, terima kasih. Tetapi Ijo, boleh tak kamu bagi saya um, kata kunci? Hmm. Uh, Kanan Lishin juga bagi jasa. Yep. Sini juga Beritahu saya menghargai jasa. My dear, when you see the word menghargai jasa, what is the keyword that come into your mind? Hmm. Terima kasih, Joey. Nice one. Sining betul. You know, can you give me the keyword? When they say, oh, we have to appreciate. So what is your keyword? Yes, Zushin, terima kasih. Hmm. You know, you know it's jasa. Jasa is contribution, right? But at the same time, I can accept Ijo's answer, which is, Jasa equivalent to dia peranan. Ah, okay. Ah, the hi, Mr. Paul, your mom lah. Okay, sorry calling your mom lah. Okay, you Mr. Paul. So, I know lah. Okay, I'm just so bad. So, yang ni merupakan satu cara. Yeah. If your parents are having class with you, ask your parents to answer question as well, okay? So that you all can learn together. Yang ni kita panggil peladan ibu bapa. Okay, ya? Yeah? Okay. Then, okay, 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 okay. Paul, nice, okay. That cara, lepas tu tadi saya ayah cara pula ni, eh, uh, peranan. Sorry, bro, something wrong. Peranan. Mm, where Ijo keep telling me, just a pemimpin. Which means this is their role. Lepas tu, uh, perempuan ku bagi apa? Cara. Cikgu, how you know is cara? Nampak tak ni, patut menghargai jasa. Yang ni merupakan cara. Then, uh, how do I confirm it is peranan? Can you check one thing? Pemimpin berjuang membebaskan negara daripada penjajah. Maksudnya yang ini merupakan peranan pemimpin. Apakah jasa mereka? Tanggungjawab mereka. Okay, Daya. What did they do? Hmm. Satu. Then now. But teacher, I still don't know how to write AC wall. That's why now we start now. Lo. Ah, I will give you the rules to follow so that you can enter your exam hall for first term exam. Uh, for those who set for the short test, uh, Ujian, biarkan sahaja. That one is not my focus. My focus is only your midterm. Yeah, where most of the school end of May, some of the school June, some schools July, and some at least August. So before your exam, make sure you replay this video yes just as a guidance but, but of course we are not doing full exercise yep just as a guidance before you enter exam hall can I? okay so there is near what you go blank page or how ah? so the um construction of our essay writing opening point ending three parts so the easing it is based on our um, content okay you see uh, our content how many points am i going to write so now let's check yang pertama, kita panggil pendahulan. Ada tak sesiapa yang boleh memberitahu saya, oh people lah, oh people. Okay. Beritahu bila untuk tiensu. Okay. So, pendahulan, saya ada empat kata kunci. Apakah mereka? Hmm. Pendahulan, empat kata kunci. Apakah mereka? Oh, and one more thing. Huh? I think a lot of kids, DC, come back, DC, come back. Ask your uh, house member, don't play game. Yeah. And then don't watch movie. Yes, ask them let you have class first two hours only, okay? Then, now, pendakulan empat kata kunci, apakah mereka yang ni tak susah? Masih ingat tak TYEK? Hmm. TYEK tu agak senang. Hmm. Langsung tak susah. What do you think TYEK is? Hmm. 
you know, English class, I ask more. Because why? Because I think some of you are a bit confused. And I think some of you are very sleepy. Slap yourself and have class. Okay? Yoki, nice. Wow, Yoshi, are you opening our notes and have the answer for me? Yep. Open up. Oh, nice one. Thanks. Okay. Topic. Lepas tu, why? Effect. And our kata kunci, mm, which is our keyword. Uh, some of you might be very curious. Teacher, why you teach BM and you use English to teach? My dear, if I'm using a language that you are not familiar with and teach you, will you learn? Will you listen? Will you study? Sorry. Mm. Okay, Daya, T-Y-E-K. Then teacher, why you speak BM at first? Because to make sure you are familiar with listening Tessa. Okay, dah. So topic ni, apakah yang perlu kita buat untuk bahagian topik? Kita perlu jelaskan. Seperti topik kita merupakan apa? Pemimpin negara. Kamu perlu jelaskan uh, apakah pandangan Uh, masyarakat terhadap pemimpin negara yang tu merupakan topik. Jangan beritahu saya, eh cikgu bolehkah saya salin daripada uh, petikan, arahan. Kalau kamu nak salin, boleh. Tetapi kamu mesti ingat sesuatu, karangan pendek langsung tak ada apa-apa yang boleh disalin. Hmm. So sorry to say that. What if there is nothing for you to copy? Isn't it you still need your brain? So why not at first you train your brain first? Correct? Hmm. So topik ni jelaskan. Topik, okay. Seperti uh, karangan kita, pemimpin negara kan? Kamu perlu jelaskan pandangan masyarakat terhadap pemimpin. So, what is our opinion towards our leader? So, I ask a question but I already know the answer. Um, Do you think people in Malaysia, we respect our leader? Do you think we listen to our leader? This is my first question. Yep. Do you think we listen, we love, and we respect them as a leader? Hmm. Okay, Lishen, thanks. Yeah. I mean, not your answer very right? good, but it is um an answer. Yes. Okay, so you see, you know, depends on who the leader is, which means you are not fair for them. So the opinion is, Uh, we don't really respect them and then we always assume what they are doing is what they should do. So, we always expect. Ya, yeah. yang ni merupakan pandangan. Maksudnya, masyarakat uh, tidak berapa menghargai jasa ataupun sumbangan pemimpin negara kerana tanggungjawab mereka dianggap sebagai satu kemestian. Ya, yeah, it's like it's a must lah. A lot of people think like that, isn't it? So let's say now our Anwar, yeah, he is doing something that benefits the country. Everybody would say, yeah, he should do that, isn't it? Nobody show like, oh, you are so nice, you are so strong, appreciation. Nobody. Yeah, lepas tu kamu perlu beritahu saya, mengapakah masyarakat berpandangan begitu? Kamu perlu memberitahu saya dalam peperiksaan. Because I track all those students who received their paper last year, So what happened is they have topic, not that one or you know, their topic is very nice or like what I said just now or, but they straight away jump to keyword. They never explain why and effect. Yep. They have the intro, but the intro is not supported, uh, it's not supported with the evidence. You never tell me why. I need supporting answer. Yeah, evidence to prove what you said so that you can get higher mark. Okay, yeah? So why, apakah maksudnya? Mengapakah masyarakat berpandangan begitu? You have to explain. It's not just copy paste the intro. Okay. Why people don't really respect and appreciate our um, leader is because you only focus on yourself. Kamu mementingkan diri sendiri. Ya. Kamu mengabaikan tanggungjawab diri sendiri. Yes. Then you only expect them to do so. Hmm. Lepas tu, apakah kesannya? Effect is kesan, ya. Kesan jika tidak menghargai pemimpin. You have to tell me what is the impact 
if we do not um, appreciate our leader, what will happen? Hmm. Apakah yang akan berlaku kalau kita tidak hmm, menghargai mereka? Hmm. Apakah kesan? Do not just tell me, uh, they will feel sad, uh, my dear. That one is personal feeling. Personal feeling is not an answer. Yes. Apakah yang akan berlaku sekiranya pemimpin tidak dihargai? Hmm. Kita biar mereka. Okay. Ah, uh, Vision, tiada. Ah, uh, kalau kamu bagi saya tidak, maksudnya kamu perlu tulis kata kerja. Hmm, okay. Tiada means tak ada dan kata nama. Hmm. So, yep, rakyat tidak bersatu padu. Memang betul. Kita akan, um, isu perpaduan akan lenyap. Ya, yeah. bermaksud apa? Uh, rakyat akan berpecah belah. Ya, yeah. we are just like, um, far apart and you just focus on your own lebih mementingkan diri sendiri yes itu betul ketidakstabilan negara ya sanjana betul ketenteraman negara terganggu yep beraku can you see actually you have point it's just that in exam you please 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 do not just tell me menjejaskan ekonomi because a leader of course econ economy is something very important but it is not the main one first mm, it's always relates to human first so not that the kids who gave me answer is strong yeah you know why because you give me the main um effect before economy mm, because economy changes it takes time okay lepas tu keyword ni merupakan salin tajuk salin tajuk maksudnya Uh, kamu perlu ada kata kunci. Kan kamu pernah belajar di sekolah. Sekolah kan sentiasa mengajar persoalannya. Apakah bla bla bla. Lepas tu tepuk dada tanya selera. I think most of you learning um question technique, right? Yeah, in school, your teacher teaching learn um question technique. But that one I already stopped using for few years already. So for my recent kids. Um, you only learn one skill from me, which is for salin tajuk. What do we do? Oleh itu, or just the rule, kita perlu meneliti. Meneliti means we have to find out, we have to know about it, okay? Then straight away, copy down your title. Mm. Title, it includes your keyword, ya? Yeah? Mm. Termasuk kata kunci. Settle? Uh, teacher, why should we do so, leh? Because if you do so, then only you can link to your EC. Mm, so it's relevant. Understand? Huh? So this is why your teacher always say, you must write down this one. It is a must. Yo, if you don't write, never mind. They only minus mark. Lo. Mm. Unless you are so smart. Um, For your EC, you write, oh, terdapat banyak blah, blah, blah. But that one is a useless sentence mm, where a lot of teachers never write it anymore. Okay, dah ya, ni pendahuluan. Apa-apa karangan juga sama. Yep, any AC, same-same. Long one, short one, also the same technique. Mm. I don't care who is your BM teacher, everybody using the same way. While you are writing an AC, you need to describe. How do you elaborate based on one and effect? Which is your teacher always say, mengapa uh, dan kesannya. Okay. Uh, I will prove to you what your teacher um, did to you um, in school as well. Untuk bahagian EC. This is the one that I can show you. Bahagian EC, biasanya kita akan menggunakan lima perkataan. I mean, I will. Uh, so, S-H-Y-E-K. Um, and then what is S-H-Y-E-K? is the way for us to write an essay. Um, for those who never attend any tuition, only school, yeah? Uh, your school teacher is following um, the... Arangan book, right? If you all knowing it, called Imbaku. Pernah dengar kan? Imbaku. If you never hear, then I'm a bit disappointed. Eh? Because this one is um, very common in teaching industry. Mm. It's just that before they come out in Baku, I already have my SHYEK. That's why I never change my teaching technique. Um, because teacher lazy. Mm -hmm. Let's check. What is in S-H-Y-E-K. S-H-Y-E-K, you will find out one thing. BM always using the same technique. For pendahuluan, isi penutup, same, same. First one, isi. Next one, how. Why. Effect. Now, can you see? 
why an effect is so important to act as our elaboration. Because if you never give me why an effect, I can tell you one thing, whatever you wrote is just touch and go. Yeah, you never elaborate and tell me, oh, if I do so, what will happen? If I don't do so, what will happen? What is the effect if we proceed? Yeah, this is the idea of like writing why and effect. It's not just, oh, teacher, I cannot think of the point, my dear. Point is just that few points. Yeah, but all of the points you have to elaborate. That's why for those students who keep complaining, teacher, I have no point. Teacher, I can't think. It's not because you can't think. You already have enough points. The main idea is to elaborate. Okay? Then K, because simple. Eh? Huh, teacher, this is easy. What? We write because nah. This is a short closing. Yeah, to um, wrap up what you wrote for this EC. Yeah, yang ni merupakan ayat penegas. Some teachers will call AP. AP means ayat penegas. Ah, and then AC, ayat contoh that your school learn my right. And then AH, ayat hurayan. Uh, and then your EC, main one. So now I will tell you what did your school do. And is it the same and equivalent to SHYEK? I ni merupakan EC. M ni merupakan mengapa. You know what's mengapa, right? Why? Okay. And then, ah, Ijo, that one is the one that I want to tell you. Mm, okay. You should, I will let you know what is your teacher's requirement. BAG is bagaimana. Okay. And K is kesan. U is ungkapan. And then P is penegasan. Penegasan is like a way to strengthen yeah, your main um, paragraph, yes. And you might be very confused. Teacher, penegasan, kesimpulan, what is the purpose? So that you know, most of you who love to write essay while you are writing, sometimes don't know why you will get out of topic. Mm, because you are too um, excited on elaboration. That's why you get out of topic because you are too lengthy. Yeah, so that's why don't do it. Huh? Be careful. And just now, Ijo asked me, teacher, my school teacher asked me to write chonto. You know what is the chonto that your teacher want? The chonto equivalent to issue semasa. You don't misunderstand your teacher. Teacher, chonto isn't it chonto near comma, comma, comma? No. The chonto is our current issue. What happened? That one is the chonto that your school teachers want. Okay? Understand, huh? If you don't understand, please write by the side. Chonto equivalent to issue semasa. The current situation. Okay? okay nah. Basically, it is our why and effect, lah, I would say. Yeah, it is our why and effect because you are giving me a, an example of the situation and you tell me if I do so, what will happen? If I don't, then what will happen? Okay? Daya? There where else? Ah, ungkapan, if there is somebody who don't know, ah, ungkapan equals to our peribahasa, our slogan. For those, ah, I think this class, we have students who score very good for BM and you all found out one thing. You don't need to purposely add on peribahasa to get high mark. Yeah, I think some of you realize those students who never go for tuition, but they always score. Because why? It's not because of Peri Bahasa. It's because of their content. Yeah. So actually, thanks, Frasa. So we are Frasa some more. Like, um, Pandu Cermat Jiwa Selamat. Is that a Peri Bahasa? No, it's just a slogan. This is how you score. Yeah. That's why I never ask students to memorize an essay. Why? Wasting time. And you need to purposely Build a sentence to fit in the peribahasa. So, yeah. Saya tak suka membuang masa. This is the reason why. Mm. Okay. So, you see, then teacher, can you tell me, you see, what do we do? Ah? And what should we do? You see, basically, my dear, straight away, write down your point. Ah. They ask for langkah, you write langkah. Lah. Means like, who should do something? Straight to the point with the topic. So, yang ni, tulis isi utama. Okay. Can I? Then how? You tell me. Oh, how do we carry out? So you told me to do this, ma. You told me this will happen, ma. Like, how? How could it happen? And then how do we carry out? Yeah. 
How is bagaimana? Bagaimanakah membuat sesuatu? Or bagaimanakah berlaku? So we have like multiple how. Bagaimanakah blah blah berlaku? So Ido, can you see? This is the contoh that your teachers want. Yeah, you have to tell me, huh? What? How? How? Let me know. Okay. And why is that? Mengapa? Mengapakah berbuat begitu? Why do we do so? Okay. Why do I write berbuat? Ah, because berbuat is an abstract. Abstract means what? Um, it is something that based on imagination and it is not an object. Hmm. Like for example, berbuat bising. Because I have kids who ask me just now. Uh, they ask me, teacher, what is the difference between berbuat and membuat? Membuat is um, we do an object. Hmm. Carry out something. Yeah, we have the end result. Berbuat is for an action where we cannot see anything. It's just, it's just an imagination thing. Okay, abstract berbuat bising. Create noise, but I cannot see. The um object at all, boleh ya? Then next one, effect, kesan, berbuat begitu, or kesan jika perkara tersebut berlaku. Hmm, can you see our elaboration always based on here, here, here. Everything is based on our main point. It is not something new that I need to think. Yeah, I don't need to purposely go and think. Wow, 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 so many points. My dear, when you have like first main point is enough. Okay, to go. Then kesimpulan ni yang merupakan ayat penegas. What do we do? We just have to like sum up what is the um main idea, main point for this paragraph so that I have to let my teacher know teacher, I never read out of topic mm, everything is just around here yes, okay yang ni merupakan ulang semula isi utama then teacher, how do I write this? you all remember your school teacher always use this word very, very common one called the gasnya. Okay, then of course we have uh, we have other like, because we have more than one isima, right? So I will give you multiple options for you to choose. Basically, you have no choice. Like, you just have to know that. Uh, ring tasnya, which means like in short. Or you can write secara ringkas. Or you can write pendekata. Okay. Okay, nah? Or sometimes, uh, for those who are very strong in writing, uh, you can write this jelas la bahawa. It's very obvious that. Okay, dah ya? Boleh? Siap. So, this is for EC. So, basically, every point, you just duplicate the same technique. And then, short AC, long AC, they are the same. Sama. Okay. Seterusnya. Uh, bahagian penutup, apakah yang perlu kita buat? Uh, pelajar yang lama, bolehkah saya tahu apakah kehendak saya untuk penulisan penutup? Hmm, apakah kehendak saya? What is my requirement when we are going to write a closing? Two things only what? I only need two things for our closing. What do you think it is? Don't tell me you don't know. Huh? At least you can give me the um alphabet. Hopefully, you all still know. One is C, another one is H. Hmm. Penutup, ah, C dan H. Apakah mereka? Pastikan kamu tahu. Yes, Sarita. Nice, Ijo Beto, Sining Beto, uh, Alia Beto, and then Daniel Beto. Hey, I want to ask, uh, anybody uh, falling asleep already? You want to die already? Because uh, I want to see uh, my class. Uh, no break in between. Yeah, I can't afford break. So if anyone wants to go to the toilet, you just let me know and you run, okay? And then next one. Um, Mr. Paul, don't die first. I know you fever. Okay, Lishen, terima kasih. Thanks for staying awake even though you are there. Okay, and sick. So, C merupakan cadangan. 
Lepas tu H merupakan harapan. Mungkin ada pelajar yang akan tanya, eh cikgu yang ni ya, kan kita cuma tulis uh, kesimpulannya, tuntasnya. Lepas tu, hmm, ya, ya, sejauh boleh, boleh. Ada, ada. Uh, but that one is in TTC YouTube channel. Yeah, that one you have to watch it before your exam lah. But our video need conversion time. So it might take a very long time. Yeah. Okay, si cadangan, H harapan. Cadangan ni merupakan apa? Kamu perlu berikan teknik untuk menyelesaikan masalah. Janganlah tulis semua pihak haruslah bekerjasama bagi awak dengan teknik untuk. Wow, smart. Sorry to say that. You only smart for one second. Yeah. But if you want to get higher mark for penutup, please give me suggestion. Yeah. Teacher, what is suggestion? Well, suggestion means you have to give me a person, pihak, or watak lah ha. A specific watak lah. And then top up with their cadangan, which is simple kata kerja lah, okay? Lepas tu tambah keterangan. Keterangan ni merupakan huraian di mana uh, merupakan harapan. Hmm. Tegu, how you know? Because I created this, of course I know this lah weh. Ha. Harapan ni sama maksud dengan kesan positif. Okay, when you want to do something, of course, it comes with a positive result. Um, then otherwise, why do I do so, right? Ah, Lishen kosong maka. Cikgu boleh tulis semua pihak berkuasa tak? Tak boleh. Nanti saya beritahu mengapa. Okay, keterangan ni seperti sekolah, ah, bukan sekolah tetapi tingkatan tiga. Tingkatan tiga ya. Kita kan pernah belajar KUS, KUS, KUS untuk bahagian keterangan dipanggil apa? Kerana? Untuk supaya, okay, you need to tell me what is the effect. How does it affect this topic? If I take this solution, yeah, you need to tell me, okay. Then next one, then teacher, isn't it this one equivalent to uh, our harapan? Yes, my dear. Yes, memang sama. Okay, sama maksud dengan harapan kita. Then teacher, how? Then it means you need to write. Two cadangan for me, which is C1 and C2. Okay, cadangan pertama, cadangan, I don't know, I have not much idea, my dear. Did you learn before our pyramid? Yeah, uh, and then not just I'm teaching, school teachers also teach before, which is the pyramid. Pyramid for us to think about the person in charge, for us to like um settle problem, to carry out something. That's why I stopped mission from writing, pihak request. Hmm. Budakku, ingat tak ni? Kalau tak ingat tak apa, pastikan kamu tahu hari ini, okay? Kita ada tujuh orang watak. Hmm. Bolehkah kamu beritahu saya? If you know this, then you are smart. I have seven characters. Not very difficult one. Very simple. What are they? Who is the most important person in your life? Yeah, don't tell me your parents, your friend. No, the most important person in your life should be you yourself. Yeah, yes, Sanjana, terima kasih. Nice one. So, yang ni merupakan diri, or sometimes people will write individual. Lepas tu, yang kedua merupakan siapa? Selepas diri sendiri, jangan tulis kawan. Where I know most of you right now, your friend is the most important, right? Sorry to say that, they are not. So, yang kedua, keluarga. Keluarga ni termasuk ibu bapa. Yep. J eh, jangan tulis datuk nenek, ah, abang adik. Ah. Jangan, jangan. Kakak pun tak nak. Ah. Because why most of the um, time, our character in our family who plays the most important role, our parents. Because they are the one who educate us and everything. Yep. Lepas tu, yang ketiga merupakan rakan. Tetapi budak kuah. Rakan takkan menjadi satu jalan penyelesaian. Rakan merupakan pengaruh negatif. Hmm, okay? Rakan ni ya, pengaruh negatif. So make sure when they come up with a solution, do not write your friend. They are only bad influence. Okay? Only bad, bad influence. Make sure you know this. Huh? So never ever be langkah. 
even though in real life your friends are so nice. Mm, but sorry to say that in writing, don't write that. Okay, yang ketiga, uh, sudah. Yang keempat, pihak sekolah, your school, where you have like multiple teachers who can uh, help you to um, solve problem. Okay, lepas tu, kita ada masyarakat. Masyarakat is the society member. Society member, um, their way of like um, solving problem is not the main one. So they can be under your penutup. They can do some small steps, but they are not the main to help us to solve problem. Okay? And next one, I will give you one word, but I want you to continue for me. What is next word that I am going to write? Media upper. Okay, Sining Beto, Lishan Beto, Izo Beto, Sanjiana Beto. Eh, all of you ready one. <laughs> okay, then Ethan boleh terima Damia Beto, Luisha Beto. Nice. You know why? Ethan, you are really, really super modern kids. Nah, later I tell you why. Huh? Okay, and I said terima kasih. Thank you. You know, when you type the answer, once I ask question, it means you are forever ready to listen. For those who cannot type, it's either you fall asleep or you really don't know. Okay, there, yeah? okay media, which one will I continue with? Uh? Media master. But Ethan, uh, you are not wrong, you know. Yeah, your answer is correct also. Later, I tell you why. Mm. Sending that one is last one. Thanks. Media master, yang ni saya pernah ajar mm, 3, 4 tahun sebelum MCO, saya memang akan ajar media master. Mungkin ada pelajar yang akan tanya, eh, cikgu, media master, media social ada beza, meh? Budaku, sudah pasti ada beza. Kerana media masa termasuk dua media yang dipanggil. Media cetak, you know, uh, printing, our newspaper, our magazine, media cetak. Lepas tu kita ada media elektronik. Media elektronik, kita ada TV, kita ada radio, kita ada internet. Dan yang terkini, kebanyakan um, pihak, mereka akan menggunakan apa? Media sosial. Mm. Jadi, dalam peperiksaan, kalau kamu tidak tulis media masa, kamu tulis media sosial juga boleh. Ada tak sesiapa dalam kelas ini yang tak faham apakah maksud media sosial? Media sosial tu maksudnya merupakan satu platform yang mempunyai pergaulan. Ya, yeah, there is interaction. Like, simple one ah, FB, IG, Twitter. Ah, And then, what else do you have? I'm not sure in your society lah. Uh, I seldom use. Oh, like TTC seminar, we are using media social to promote. Yeah, you won't see us using media mass. Because why? Press one, we never use newspaper. Next one, we never use TV. We never use radio. Mm, now you found out why. If you only write media social, I can accept. But it depends on our topic itself. Can I? So media social, platform. Untuk bergaul. Communication. Then, and last one is what uh, Sini told me. Kerajaan. Kerajaan ni ya, budakku. Kalau kamu tanya saya, dalam peperiksaan, tadi Lishen juga ada tanya. Cikgu, bolehkah saya guna uh, semua pihak berkuasa? Uh, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, whenever there is some solution, I must have a specific government body. Like, for example, in education, who is the one that should be in charge? Yeah, siapakah yang bertanggungjawab dalam bidang pendidikan? I think this one you all know more than me. Hmm, thanks, Lishen. Sanjiana Beto, thanks. Because um, since MCO, I think everybody knows about this um, government body very well, yeah, which is KPM, Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia. Hmm, kalau ada uh, kaitan dengan kesihatan, Kementerian Kesihatan, Pelancongan, Kementerian Pelancongan. Hmm, so it's very important for us to know all these kind of current issues. So, you know, this is the uh, contoh that your teacher want. Hmm, okay. So not just chantonia, comma, comma. Can I? So settle for this. So any essay, short one, long one, same direction. Yeah. No other option. Yes. Unless you are those students who write an essay without following technique where I am the one. Ah. Mm. I created technique just because you all need it. Yeah. Otherwise, I have no technique. Mm. Yes, correct, Izo. So all of this we pick either for our cadangan. Nice. Okay, boleh ya? But friend cannot lah. I told you just now, friend cannot lah. Because friend will always be the bad influence. Yeah, okay? But you can write 
Dewi sendiri, individu memilih rakan. Ah, then it is away. Okay. Done. And this one, we must get a minimum of 25 marks. Mm, minimum 25 lah. But I bet uh, not many people can get more than that. Mm. Yeah, teacher very mean one. Okay, let's pass to. Biar kita sim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure you know what are you doing right now. You know. What I never read full AC because all answers provided in QR. Yes. That's why I only want to make sure you have um, the skill to enter exam hall. You know what are you supposed to do when you are sitting in exam hall. Okay. Huh? Next one. Seterusnya. Karangan panjang. Uh, will I do with you? No, 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 no. We save our time to do something better and more useful one. Okay. Um, Long AC, short AC, same technique. Difference is only the requirement. Ah, kehendak soalan tak sama. Yang ni kita memerlukan 500 patah perkataan. Sama, jangan tulis melebihi. Hmm, jangan tulis melebihi. Yang ni perenggan lebih kurang enam. Some teacher will ask for five. And then each paragraph 100 words. Well, nowadays, I don't really encourage you all to do so. Why? Because 100 words. You all might be writing rubbish. Teacher, what is rubbish? Or why you say I write rubbish one? Because you will give me extra tonto without proper or like um constructive answer. Yeah, so I will always stop student from giving me example. But bear in mind, bear in mind, bear in mind. I say not giving me chonto as a common, common, common thing. Your teacher say contoh is needed is because of our how I effect you right situation. Understand? Ah? Don't ask me again, teacher. My teacher say contoh. Contoh is because of scenario. Okay? Mm. Seterusnya, enam perenggan lepas tu, sama. Kita perlu cari T, K, K dan F. Boleh? Mm. Seterusnya, ah, teacher, I don't know eh, what are you talking about. Bodaku, check question one. Can you see? Rencana is our format. Understand? And then, yes, correct, Yuzo. Your, your chonto writing is about real life issue. Yes, correct. But you don't need to go see chonto near. Lah. Mm, you can straight away write the point. Yeah. Don't need to write chonto near. Misal near is fine. Lepas tu, topic kita. Wah, cikgu yang ni saya tak tahu. Oh. That's why kalau tak tahu dalam peperiksaan, jangan pilih. Yeah. Don't ask me, teacher, if I don't know how. Ah, my dear. If you don't know how to swim, what happened is either you learn to swim so that you can swim in the future. Or you don't swim right now so that you don't get drowned. Understand? So in exam, it is the same. You must make sure you get ready to enter exam hall. What if you are not ready? Do something else. Yeah. But you cannot give up. Hmm. Okay, dah ya? Yang ni, kata kunci dekat mana? Kesan. Simple one. And then, topik dekat mana? Cikgu mereka bagi ni ya, saya tak tahu eh. My dear. They said rencana tentang, this is our title, title, my right? So, teacher, I don't know what are they asking for. Can you see KK is kesan? Kesan apa? Kesan daripada topik ni. Yeah. Yang ni merupakan topik. Yes. Cega sebelum para hapuskan. Then, can you see? If you ask me, cega equivalent to what? Cara lah, okay? Cara untuk menghalang, to prevent. Hmm. Then, scan QR code on first page. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, for those who never haven't received the notes, and because I have kids who ask me in the morning, uh, they haven't received the note yet. So what happened is when you haven't received your notes, um, download from TTC website. Mm. Oh, Zerlin, of course it's empty. I will I will upload later at seven p.m. Yeah, because if I upload now, will you come for class? You won't. Yeah, then now uh, you just copy answer. You also don't know what is the purpose. Uh. Okay, that, yeah. So topic. And then in exam, anything relates to kesihatan, I will stop you all from doing it. Unless you are from science stream. Then okay. Because science stream kids, your um, kesihatan, your health, everything, you have more idea on it. Mm. But if you are from other classes, I will stop you all from doing a um, question like this. Mm. So this one is first question. Teacher, in exam, how do I know which question to choose what? My dear, you don't know, right? This one, kesan ma, right? Then, you pick up four points. If you have enough four points, nice, great. You can continue for this question. Make sure all those answers are not overlap. Mm. 
Then next one, question two. So I like to do it. I need you to analyze for every question. Uh, not just on one question. You thought you are smart and strong enough. You need to do some comparison so that you don't do this weird mistake in exam. After you write halfway for one question that you chose, then you tear off the paper and you redo another question. My dear, you will have so much time. Why not just analyze all questions first? List down all points first. Then only you make final decision which one you have more confident. Yeah, my dear, I, I would rather you spend five minutes earlier to settle everything. I don't want you to like change your question 30 minutes later. Yep, understand? Lepas tu, yang ni merupakan kata kunci. Uh, lepas tu, topik kita, emosi dalam kalangan bermaja. Yang ni merupakan topik. Then, cikgu lah, yang ni ada format tak? Budak aku, ada format tak? Kan tak ada ni. Mereka dalam panggil kita buat apa? Bincangkan. Bincangkan maksudnya karangan jenis perbincangan. Okay? Means that like general six. Six isi. Uh, I mean six paragraphs. Okay? Uh, pendahuluan empat isi penutup. Lepas tu, eh cikgu, yang ni macam mana ya? Kamu tulis kebaikan. Lepas tu, empat isi. Then uh, I have a kid who asked me, yes, correct, actually, nice. Mm. Then I have kids who really ask me this uh, because they are really worried. Cikgu, uh, kalau saya cuma ada tiga isi untuk semua soalan, then how, uh, teacher, I cannot walk. Then, my dear, choose a topic where you have more confidence. Yeah. Choose the topic where you have more confidence so that it's easier for you to elaborate while you are writing. Yeah, like for example, question one, question two, which one do you have more confidence when you choose that question? Okay, if every point is equivalent. Nah. Mm. Okay, so don't simply make a choice before you understand everything. Really? So there was yeah. Okay, question three, four, no need to do it with you lah, huh? because it's too easy. Mah, huh? Because... Can you see kepentingan teknologi pendidikan? Hmm. And then this one, cara menangani masalah jerebu. Okay? Hmm. Oh, same thing. All these four questions, full answer provided. Hmm. Yes, it's all correct. Think carefully before you choose the question. And I won't ask my student to think only. You need to provide point to prove that you chose and think correctly. This is the reason why I need you all to write down this part. You know, right, in our normal class, I always prepare the uh, idea box. Yeah, the box for idea uh, is very important. So if you can't even fill up that, then I don't think you can do that question. Yeah, that's why. Spend about 5 to 10 minutes to list down all questions answered first. Mm. No worry on timing. Mm. Just that you don't rush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the I say just now, all answers provided. Question 1 to question 4. All essays provided. Yeah. So if you want to try all questions, just go ahead. Mm. If you tell me, teacher, but I'm very terrible in BM or never mind law, then you try one round, copy all those um example. I mean not example, um the chanto karangan. Yeah, you can do that. So you have like a practice before you go for exam. At least you know what to write. Okay. Then yeah, because you learn nothing. Till you start to write something. Can? Next one, paper two. Oh, paper one settled already, ma, in exam, two hours. 30 minutes short essay, 1.5 hours for long essay. Can? Then now, paper two, karangan kedua, kan? Tadi kita cakap ada berapa bahagian ni? Tiga bahagian, kan? Tiga bahagian yang pertama tu, ada kaitan dengan tata bahasa, lepas tu, uh, tak ada soalan struktur, ya? Uh, morphology, syntaxis, lepas tu, penyuntingan, PMS dan lagi satu peribahasa ah uh, cikgu 35 maka uh, berapa maka untuk setiap bahagian ah uh? hmm uh, Renan, nice question i think it's ttc youtube yeah but i will post later they will they will update later no worry yes so soalan pertama morphology we see just sama right jenis kata and then let's check 35 maka teacher how they allocate i can tell you unknown why because for this set right our morphology, soalan pertama, kita ada 8 maka. Eh, yang ni bukan 6 mark, I miscount. This is 8 mark. 8 maka, morphology. Teacher, how do you get 8 marks? My dear, calculation part. Kita perlu tulis, senaraikan dua kata adjektif, dua kata akronim. Maksudnya, saya ada 4 maka dekat sini. Okay? Lepas tu, nampak tak? 
kamu perlu membina satu ayat sendiri. Oh, cikgu, pilih satu perkataan dan bina ayat. My dear, is your BM understanding okay? Untuk setiap perkataan. Okay, means that how many words that we are going to write for? Means how many sentences should I have for? So, empat perkataan. Maksudnya, saya perlu ada empat ayat. Don't tell me. Teacher, can I do something like this? I combine all into one sentence lah. My dear, you thought you are smart or your teachers are smarter. They want four sentences. Don't you understand what is four sentences? Yep. Understand? Can I? Okay, empat perkataan, empat ayat. Lepas tu, setiap uh, empat tambah empat, kita ada lapan maka. Hmm. Kalau ada um, soalan yang hanya bagi tahu, oh kita perlu cari tiga perkataan, tiga kata bla bla bla. Maksudnya kamu cuma ada enam maka, tiga perkataan, tiga ayat, enam maka. Then teacher, the two marks eh, the two marks will be at other part. It's either sintaksis, penyuntingan, peribahasa, or BMS. Okay, so that's why this thirty five marks is like mix and match in overall. Okay, ah, huh? ah uh, teacher. May I know how to answer in exam? Hmm. How to answer in exam? First one, they ask for kata adjective, right? Kata adjective. Then you just write kata adjective and put the dash, lah, okay? And write your answer. Then second one is kata acronym. Then you just write kata acronym and then dash answer. But I have next teacher. Um, different teacher, different style, right? This is the main one, yeah, which is like saving time. So, another one is drawing table. They ask you to draw a table, then you draw for them because they are the one who mark your paper this round. Yeah, they want you draw. Yeah, just follow this instruction. Okay, then kata adjective, kata acronym, just like this, law. Understand? Just draw a table, a few lines only. Okay. Then next one, bina ayat, what to do? Bina ayat. Then one, two, three, four. Lah. Okay, just like this. Simple, not a big deal. Oh, by the way, uh, you all know what's acronym? Acronym is like a combination of the alphabets and it becomes a word. Yeah, easy one. Uh. Do you know what is chirpen? Do you know this? What is chirpen? Please don't tell me you don't know. Ijo terima kasih. Nice one. Daniel betul, Damia betul, thanks Chloe betul, Sining betul, Jaro betul, Sarita betul. Nice. And then, Jared, you are form 4 and you tell me the answer from form 1. Nice one. The first chirpen that you learn in your life. Chirpen, orange. <laughs> okay, nice. So, chirpen ni bermaksud Cerita pendek. Hmm. Boleh ya? Okay. And then consist component sastera. Hmm. So, same thing. Answer all given in my QR. So, this is how you answer in exam. Huh? Then next one, syntaxis. My dear. Um, syntaxis is just what you learn in PT3. All sentence structure stuff. Yes. Maksudnya, mereka panggil kita buat apa? Dua ayat tunggal. Bagi tiga ayat yang anda pilih. I just want to ask in this concept. Ayat much more. Apakah kata yang saya ada untuk ayat much more? I'm going to check who will answer wrongly. Hmm. Eh, Susie, did I see you correct just now? Cerita pendek. I scared, I forget. Okay, ayat much more. Kita perlu ada kata apa. Saya nak tahu. Kita ada kata apa untuk ayat majmuk? Damia, terima kasih. Nice. Yes, itu betul. You all might be curious. Teacher, why you ask me this question? It is because a lot of you will answer. Yeah, actually, that's correct, correct. Huh? Emily juga betul. Nice one. Because what if I have students right now, in your mind, you are thinking of kata majmuk then I have to ask you to go home and write 100 times. It is kata hubo. It's not kata majmu. Mm. Because kata majmu is combination of word. Then it becomes new meaning. Tu ya, kata majmu. 
Like for example, uh, <coughs> cermin mata, your glass, ah, cermin mata, eh, glass pula ni, cermin mata. Lepas tu, yang kita ada tu, eh, tak tangan. Hmm. It can be either combined or separated. It's fine, okay? Because if I separate my kaki tangan, it will become our hands and leg. Yeah. But if I combine, it will become worker. Okay? Understand? 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 Ayat tunggangi maksudnya tak ada kata hubung. Boleh? Hmm. Can pick up, huh? Dan, 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 dan. So now, when we are going to split sentences, which means... My first step is to find out something. What am I supposed to find out? Um, apakah yang perlu saya cari? Ni langsung bukan satu masalah kan? Perlu cari sesuatu yang dipanggil kata hubung. Okay? That's why just now when you are able to answer my question, uh, what is the kata that we have in ayam atmuk? It is kata hubung. So we just have to find it out and split the sentence just like that. Okay? Dan 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 next one tiga dua satu eh this one ah penyuntingan ah uh, we did just now right I mean I mean in the bracket is kesalahan tetapi kan kita ada empat jenis kesalahan hmm I'm not sure how many of you in this class you are old people yep. If you are old enough, you should be able to answer because we did this in our class. So, kesalahan kita ada empat jenis. Apakah mereka? Who else? You know. Okay, Ijo, you only know that last one. Okay lah. Another three leh. Okay, Ethan, terima kasih. We have four. Hmm. Okay, Ijo, thanks. Uh, Paul, betul, terima kasih. And then, yeah, Ijo, Ijo. Two more alphabets, four more alphabets in front. Ah, hold also four more alphabets in front. Hmm, because bahasa is everything. Yeah, bahasa is everything, my right? Then yang pertama kita panggil ejaan. Lepas tu imbuhan. Yes, Paul terima kasih. Imbuhan. Lepas tu tata bahasa. Lepas tu kita ada istilah. Hmm. I'm quite amazed that you all can give me istilah first. Uh -huh. So, Paul, bahasa istana is um under tata bahasa. Mm. So, we do not have like one part purposely for bahasa istana because sometimes they don't have. Uh -huh. Okay, that yeah. Istilah, if you were very new or your BN is not very good, um, istilah, it means the word, the word itself is wrong. So, for all those old humans, you all know the sentence I always use for my um kesalahan uh, istilah. Yeah, the sentence that I always use since first time you enter my class, I always use that example. Then you know what is istilah. If you remember lah, if you don't remember, I'm a bit sad. Okay, a bit only ah. So istilah is perkataan. Because ejaan in one tata bahasa is not a problem. Only istilah because I know some students cannot identify, cannot understand, don't know what am I talking. Istilah maksudnya example lah. Pelajar. Makan di tandas. I want to ask, is this sentence correct? Adakah ayat ini betul? All of you with common sense, you know. Oh, teacher, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. But after you think for a while, you will tell me, teacher, I thought, can lah. Yeah, I think it makes sense. But my dear, who will eat in toilet? Yes, for hygiene purpose, for a general human sense, you don't eat in toilet because of hygiene purpose. Thanks, Ijo. Terima kasih. And for this question, um, I try to minimize um the compound of answer because why? Um, in class I write saya, so we have multiple answer to replace tandas ma. But here, because it is student, makan di tandas is impossible. So where do you eat at canteen? And I know nowadays you can eat in class, then that one is another story, okay? But in general, students eat in canteen, okay? Can I? And don't tell me, teacher, can I change makan? Then what do you want to tell me? Belajar, membuang air besar, ya? 
Mm, you don't do that because there is some confusion. What are you doing? It can be an issue. So they only change an answer without argument. Yeah, understand? So you don't tell me, teacher, pelajar, we write pekerja lah, can? Then all those uh, workers, they eat in the toilet, my dear. This one is a bit too much lah. Mm, so we only change those common sense answer. Can I? So basically for Istila, you have no argument with your teacher one. Yes, too bad. Lepas tu, uh, mesti ingat bagaimana kita menjawab soalan penyuntingan sama ada uh, melakar jadual, table lah, table, table. This is what most of the teachers want right now, but also half-half lah, almost half-half. So some teachers, they just ask you to write your arrow. So error and then arrow, then pembetulan, just like this. Then some with table, jadual ya, uh, kesalahan. Lepas tu, pembetulan. Okay, then just like this. Mm. If you tell me, it's a table drawing, um, I think it's a bit wasting time. But do you know, you are writing all answers on full skate paper. Full skate paper already with horizontal line. Do you know what is your next step, my dear? You just draw one line, one line to close it down, okay? Just like this. That's why it's not really wasting time, okay? Because we are not answering in question paper. All answers would be in full skate paper. Yep. Don't write your answer in question paper, ah. Huh? Yes, because nobody will mark your question paper. Yep. Remember this. I don't want to see people feel because you answer in wrong paper, not because you don't smart, okay? Yeah, not because you are not smart. Okay, Hena? Yeah. Then next one, BMSR. This is the one that really need to teach one because I scared some of you never learn in school. Mm. Okay, biar kita simak ya. Tadi kan kita dah beritahu apakah maksud BMS. BMS ni bermaksud kita perlu menukarkan bahasa klasik kepada bahasa Melayu modern. Apakah maksud bahasa Melayu modern? Berlaku tulis ni ya. Kita ada tiga teknik. Yang pertama, cari watak dahulu. Kerana kalau kamu tidak mencari watak, tak mungkin kamu dapat membina satu ayat yang lengkap. Hmm, cari watak dahulu. Lepas tu yang kedua, cari kata kerja. Kerana kata kerja akan memberitahu kita bagaimanakah kita membina ayat. Hmm, satu ayat tu. Kata kerja, kita perlu ada watak. Lepas tu tambah kata kerja. Lepas tu baru kita tambah keterangan. Budakku masih ingat tak? Apakah maksud keterangan? Kan kita ada KUS tadi. Hmm, kerana untuk supaya, ya, tapi keterangan ni ada kaitan dengan uh, petikan. Ya, kita tak perlu huraikan diri sendiri. Boleh faham? Can understand, ah? Lepas tu, cari kata kerja cikgu. Seperti ni sahaja, ah. taklah budakku, kita perlu buat satu semak, kan? Yang ketiga ni, kita perlu semak tata bahasa. Maksudnya, imbuhan perlulah betul. Okay, lepas tu struktur ayat. So you will find out second and third almost the same uh, because our last step is always for checking. Mm. Okay, now let's check. Oh, by the way, for those who learned before, you know there is one um, reminder, right? All of your teachers always remind you. Whenever you see the word marker, M-A-K-A, -A, eh? you only change to one word call lalu but i would tell you it's not every time okay it can be lalu it can be kemudian provided provided ah uh, the marker is in the middle yeah di tengah but what if the marker is in front of the sentence? If you all realize, uh, like this paragraph, I have multiple marker, but it is at different places. So if it is at beginning of the sentence, then we will can we can uh, okay? So there is yeah. Uh, some of you who are still very blur, let's check, huh? 
uh, I will just underline all those marker marker first uh, so easier for you to see. Okay, can? So this marker is in the middle. I can use lalu. Mm. Then next one, marker is in front. I can use seterusnya. Or I can use kemudian. Okay, lalu also can use kemudian to replace that. So kemudian can be in front or at the middle. Okay, then this marker also seterusnya or kemudian also can. Then you might be very curious. Teacher, why you never change the first marker? Because may I ask one question? Do I have any sentence before this? If I don't have, it's fine for me. Yeah. So I can ignore this because it is at first. Can ignore. Okay, yeah. So dear. The next one, teacher, you say find what that word. How do I find? May I ask you a simple question? First sentence, who is my watak? Hmm. Ayat pertama, siapakah watak saya? I need to know this. First sentence. What is my watak? Who is my watak? Ah. Yes, terima kasih. Nice. And then, Tension, betul. Damia, betul. Lishan, betul. Nice one. You know why I ask this? Uh? Because, uh, same, same, I have my morning kids who give me wrong answer. Yeah, but this wrong answer is not because you are not strong enough. It's because teacher got multiple human world. Then how? Uh? Choose the first human first. Yeah, who is the main one in this sentence? Because this dialogue, it started by Temenggong. Hmm. Hey, Sanjana, line two, uh, one, two. Oh, thanks. Why my previous class never tell me what girly are you? <laughs> girly the students. I get marker, uh, then like kemudian. Uh. Mm. Okay, that, so we all know the first sentence, who is the one talking? Temenggong. So, Temenggong. Bersemba. So, this is what we call in Bohan. We need to make it into a correct sentence. Kamu bersembah. Sembah is not prayer, but you go and meet the king. Teacher, how you know is the king, right? My dear, can you see the dialogue? Temenggong, who did he talk to? Mm, our tuanku, which means the king. Mm, that's why. Then in the dialogue itself, we need to change. La. But daulat tuanku, that one cannot change. La, okay, that one is how you adjust the king. So that one, I cannot change. So, Dalat Tanku Dara, Patik Menyuru. Uh, teacher, it seems nothing wrong. Wo. Patik Menyuru. You don't give me Patik Bertita. Patik, it means when you were talking to the king, you use Patik. Don't change, okay? Patik Menyuru. Orang bertawal semalam tadi. Seorang pun tak bertemu. Yep, this one, you can actually change to what? Uh, you didn't see anybody, right? Dia, uh, not dia pula ni. So, seorang pun tak bertemu. This one lah. Uh. Patik tidak. Berjumpa. Sesiapa. Okay, just like this. This is what we call um changing to a correct phrase. Where... You do not use bahasa pasar. Mm, understand? So this is easier than those Chinese class one. Chinese class is like you have to understand the hidden meaning. But BM has no hidden meaning. BM is just that you correct the grammar error. The sentence itself, you restructure into a correct sentence, which is watak, kata kerja, keterangan. Then everything is safe. Okay, boleh ya? So this is how we do for BMS. So same, same, my answers all provided. So this one, how many marks do we have? Uh? Six marks. Yeah, but sometimes it was like four marks. Yeah, four to six marks in exam. Mm. So do you need to really understand the story before you sit for exam? It's fine. But of course, if you understand the story first, it's always better. Why then? Because form four, only form four. Lah. But when you go for SPM, they might ask either form four or form five. Okay, either one. We only have one prosa every year. Mm. Satu tahun, satu prosa. Mm. Yang ni prosa tingkatan empat. Mm. Dan ya, seterusnya.
Eh, hey, budakku, peribahasa. Don't tell me you want to let go peribahasa, please. As I said just now, peribahasa, you can get the uh, list from your textbook. Yeah, from your textbook. Daripada buku teks. Ya, tak semestinya perlu hafal buku peribahasa. My dear, it's fine, it's fine, okay? You can get it from your textbook. Hmm, tingkatan 4, tingkatan 5. It's very useful one. Just go ahead, okay? Then, this one is only nyatakan tiga peribahasa. But sometimes they might ask for fill in the blanks. Isi tempat kosong. Ya, yeah. so jadi perlu baca arahan sebelum membuat uh, soalan ataupun menjawab soalan. Boleh? Seterusnya, so, teacher morphology just like, I mean, uh, tata bahasa all only like that. Yes, lima bahagian sahaja. Tiga puluh lima mata. Seterusnya, so, lagi senang. Mm, this one even easier. By the way, did I mention just now in exam, when you answer paper two, do not jump question. Always start from first one, morphology. Don't tell me, teacher, can I go and start from the back? No need. You will regret. Because you will spend too much time at last part. Yep. Okay, Daya. So, pemahaman ni, 35 marker. So, you have question 6 and 7. Three questions. Uh, correct, Izo. Pandai ni. BMS just cover the pertikan into our normal BM usage. Yep. So, that's why I say BM has nothing to memorize. Did you find out anything that we need to memorize from just now until now? Yeah. Nothing. Yes, Gerald Perry Bahasa. That one, uh, only once in a while. Lah. Three only ma. So two books only ma. Right? Yes, now let's check. Hey, my dear, this is the only part where I would say, jangan baca petikan. Don't, don't, don't. Don't waste your time reading the material. Jangan baca bahan. Bazirkan masa sahaja. Because why are you so bad one? Because after I read the um, passage, does it help? For me to answer my question, no. But I do understand what are they trying to say, lah. If you say, um, teacher, if I want to read that, you go ahead, provided you have enough time. Otherwise, first step, baca soalan, because in exam, it's about efficiency. Yeah, efficiency and how effective it was. It's not like your daily routine. Daily routine, I will ask you to read only because why? All passage is useful. It helps in our language. But it is exam. Time is everything. So, pertama, jawab soalan. Then you will find out one thing. Teacher, nothing to memorize. Ah. Nothing. Why? Berdasarkan bahan. Copy answer. Question two. Berdasarkan semua bahan. Copy answer. Where should I memorize? I have nothing. I have nowhere. I have no resource to memorize. Because they can come out anything. Yep. Then question three and question four. Question three, K okay, but. What do you memorize? Do you memorize your brain? No, but you just need to train your brain for common answer. Co not to say common answer, but common sense, okay? Because it is about keyboard. You might say, well, teacher, you very bad, are you? Yeah, teacher, what if I have no common sense, then build common sense, though. Is there any other way? Yeah, I won't ask you to copy answer because it's not worth. Okay, lepas tu, soalan ketiga. Eh, cikgu yang ni juga operana, no? But how... how how would it like look like so different one? Because this is also k but This k but it is relevant to our case study, Kajian case. Mm. They will give you a scenario and then you have to explain. Yeah. This is what we call um case study. Okay, k but four marks. And I will tell you how the mark allocation would be. And now, now can you see right, why I emphasize on keyword just now? Because if you don't understand the meaning of the keyword, I can tell you, basically, you are losing all the mark in BM. Yep. BM is not just here, but understanding also. Yes. So you can ignore every part I teach today, but not keyword. Okay. Daya. Then three marks teacher, how to get it? Huh? I have two types of teachers. First type, three marks, three points, three marks. Mm, we have that kind of teacher. Three marks, three points, settle. But to play safe, I would ask you to talk up um, Hurayan. Yes. She marks how it goes. Huh? Tiga isi, tiga Hurayan. Huh, teacher, I have no time more. My dear, tiga Hurayan doesn't mean you have to write three more sentences. Do you think I'm that cool? I'm not, okay? Tiga Hurayan is our KUS, remember? Yeah, just continue. Yes. No need to tell me, teacher, I don't know. My dear, 
continue with kerana untuk supaya. Is that very difficult for you? Yeah, it's just like when I do so, what is the effect? Yeah, like this one, they ask for implication, right? You wrote about the kesan, then you tell me, oh, if this happened, then what will happen in the future? Yeah, or you are writing the um, reason why kerana. Okay, then for uh, number four, number four, your four mark. Okay, this one is not that crazy, four plus four. This one is only two plus two. Dua isi tambah dua huraya. Okay, that's how you all will find out when you are writing k right? The answer is a bit long because of Urayan. Mm. Yeah, 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 Emily. That one is another teacher. Two marks for EC, one mark for Bahasa. But huh, at the same time, uh, different school, uh, no, even though same school, uh, the, the teacher tell you different things. Gosh, so weird. So actually, yeah, dua ayat only. Yes. But the dua ayat is about four to five lines. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, my dear, this is what Emily teacher said. Uh. Uh, two marks for EC and one mark for Bahasa. And sometimes it's like uh, dual EC side, dual EC, dual Huraya, right? It's like 1.5, 1.5. So to play safe, three EC, three Hurayan, no matter how, I score everything. Mm. This is how I get full score and tackle all examiner. They can't mark me wrong. Yes, because I only provide something more. But my dear, stop it. Uh, not too much. You don't expect your examiner will read everything for you. Whatever top up that we write, only one EC as extra backup. We don't write more than that. Otherwise, they are going to make a choice. Are you sure examiner is going to make a choice with you? No. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. And then, oh, four. Oh, it's fine. Don't cry. Never met teacher at the beginning of school. Nice. Okay. That, yeah. Oh, by the way, huh? um, for k but right, always remember one thing. No campaign. No campaign in my class because campaign is useless unless you support with activity. Ah, okay, okay. Unless support with activity. Otherwise, don't write campaign. Mm. Yes, correct, Izo. Correct. Mm. Actually, how long uh, to spend on this part? Basically, how do we uh, allocate the timing? Ah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, particular umum. Um, no matter is comsas or this particular umum modern one, how long do you think you are uh, should allocate? Remember, four marks, four minutes. Three marks, three minutes. Yeah. Okay, so how long? It depends on the mark given. Mm. That's why if you want to cut down the time, always remember, daily life, you should be able to think about all these topics already. That's why I say always read. Yeah, read current issue, newspaper, e-news, or whatever. Just make sure you have something when you enter your exam hall, you have something in your mind, just write. Yeah, this is how you cut down the time to spare it for our Rumusan. Mm, because Rumusan need a lot of reading time. Yeah, later I tell you why reading time so much. Let's say, uh, uh, petikan ketujuh, right? Uh, petikan ketujuh, pelanik. Soalan ketujuh, petikan sastera. Wow, teacher, I read this komsasa. Read. Until the end, also you don't know what are you reading. That's why straight away, my dear. So Alan, bahan kedua, then go ahead. Yeah, answer. Then semua bahan, answer. Okay, can you see masa ala? You remember just now the keyword that we touched? Mm. Always on keyword. And number three, pendapat, faktor. Then, kebat lah. And number four, uh, pendapat, Chiri, chiri. Everything relates to keywords. So the main idea is you know the requirement of the sentence. Okay. Huh? Then case study law, my dear. Ni case. Huh? Mm. case. Then you answer based on the case. Mm. Same structure, three marks and then four marks. Mm. So tiga isi tiga hurangan. Empat maka ni dua tambah dua. My generation is four plus four. Your generation no more. Two plus two only. Mm. Not that crazy anymore. That yeah? Then novel, eh, my dear, novel, just now I told you, my right? Novel, four marks, it is always a guaranteed four mark. Teacher, why leh? Because of petikan. And I need to tell you first, this novel, random novel. Yeah, dipile secara rawak. It means it can from different zone. Mm, different zone. Uh, is there any um, students which is outstation one, you are not from Klang Valley in this class. So they can ask for anything. Teacher, what is the novel, ah, my dear, on this page? We have four, four types of novel. Okay, um, Eunice. 
Yeah, you can just they can come out anything from here. And next one is the six marks. These six marks are my dear. How many points are we supposed to write? Huh? They never tell us how many points, man, right? So to be safe, three plus three. Tiga AC, tambah tiga bukti. Ah, this one is not Hurayana. Ah. This one is bukti ataupun conto. You must make sure you give me the bird is the word. Okay? The storyline as a proof of evidence. Okay? Then you might be very curious. Ah, teacher, then how that? You see the requirement, right? I told you just now. It is about consens and cable. So this one is about sikap sikap watak utama. Basically, what do they ask? They ask for watak dan perwatakan. Yeah, they are trying to use another word to confuse you. But actually, is it very confusing? No. So this one equivalent to perwatakan. So like for example, our Lieutenant Adnan di Nobel, what is the uh, sikap uh, watak utama? Berani, lepas tu bersemangat patriotisme, then you talk up with your chonto, which is your book team, to show me what did he do to prove that he is that kind of person. Just like this. When you know about jalan cerita and character, remember this week we learned concept, right? When you know about the wata and jalan cerita, basically you know everything. Yeah. Okay, so no need to like focus on memorize, okay? Don't waste time. Then how do we start for our novel? Teacher, like this, uh, point form cannot. Point form cannot. It's all about sentence structure. Yeah, structure ayat mestilah betul, tak ada bentuk point. Okay. So novel yang telah saya kaji, how you start? Uh? Straight away. Novel yang telah saya kaji, whatever question are also the same. Uh? Yelah. Blah, blah, blah. Then karya, blah, blah, blah. Karya means like the uh, result, yeah. Okay, hey, karya, penulis lah. Karya siapa? This is the intro. It's a must ah. If you do not write this, um, most teacher will give you zero straight away because I'm not, um, I don't know which novel that you choose. Yeah, straight away zero mark. Even though I know your answer is correct, I'll give you zero straight away to make sure you remember forever in your life you did something wrong. Then, so this one is a must to have as an intro. Hmm. Do we need penutup for novel? No need. And how do we allocate the paragraph? Um, because I love about um, how um, systematic it is. So I will always write one EC, one conto in one paragraph. Second EC, uh, conto, another paragraph. Yeah, but some teachers, they can accept all in one. Yeah, for novel, novel not much um requirement, so it's fine. Okay, yeah. so only six marks. Make sure you answer correctly. That's all. Mm. So all Lieutenant Adnan notes provided at the back of these notes, and then um for those who haven't received, download from website, and then for uh, other zone, your novel answers. I mean, what is that? Uh? the notes are uh, is in our QR. Okay, it's in our QR. I will upload after seven. Okay, after seven, not now. Okay, then next one, settle for novel, uh, six marks. And then your rumusan. For those who never do rumusan before, I think today you will die in this class. Because why? Rumusan is something with format. Yep. At first, I have to let you know first, we have four paragraphs. This is my first um, reminder. Kita ada empat perenggan. By the way, rumusan is summary. Then teacher, is it like ringtasan? No. Then teacher, is it like our PT3 rumusan? No. <laughs> yeah, it's all tak perlu tu. Okay, so empat perenggan. Kita ada pendahuluan. Dua jenis isi dan penutup. But you know what is the main difference? Ah? This one, you have no idea on what are you supposed to write because they never give you any guidance. So that's why I said for Rumusan, this will be the part where we need some time. Even though only 30 marks, ah, but I expect you all spend about 45 minutes. Why? Eh? Because first one, Pache Petikan. It is a must. Then teacher, why, why should I read the petikan? Ah? My dear, 
Do you know what? Are you supposed to write based on the instruction? No, you don't know. Why? Because they never give you anything. Lah. No keyword. So, baca petikan. Apakah kegunaannya untuk mendapatkan ataupun untuk mencari focus? Teacher, may I know what is focus? Focus equivalent to, yeah, there are, yes, 45 minutes for something so short is because you know why. Yes. It is because um, you need to read. Yeah. So focus equals to kata kunci. Okay, can I, uh, in my day, I want to ask, uh, I have one kid waiting outside. Oh. Uh, when you all join this meeting, do you need to wait for people to allow you to come in? No need, right? Okay, then I think the human a bit weird. Yeah. Don't know who is the person. Mm, or just click join, my right? Okay, okay. Now, let's check. Uh, where am I now? Ah, I'm back for that. So, try focus. Focus equal to kata kunci. Ha, teacher, how long? How long? What if I don't know? That's why you know why I ask you to know what do you are. Uh, I ask you to remember the keyword page that I asked you to do it just now because this is the main session that I need. Kata kunci. Okay, so basic one, basic one uh, for those who really don't know, uh, our FCUK is our main focus. Then, teacher, uh, how do I know I have FCUK or not? Or so. Just to read the passage to identify. Teacher, wasting time all. If you don't waste this 10 minutes, I would say you will waste the entire 30 marks. Yep. This is the reason why. Teacher, start from pendahuluan. Ah. Yes. Mm. Unless you tell me you left last 10 minutes to write. Lah, then you start from second paragraph. Otherwise, always start from first. Mm. Okay? You are looking huh, teacher, sure. Ah. Sure, start now. Like, let's check. So, teacher, really? Ah. Yes. Okay, let's check. Huh? Okay, pendahuluan, first sentence, they said pada era ini. Okay, I just cut it short, okay, to save time. Then, negara kita semakin disanyung tinggi. Idea. They are telling us our country, people admire us, people amazed with us. So, is there any keyword that you can find? FCUK, kebaikan, keburukan, ciri-ciri, peranan. If there is nothing. So, what are you going to write right now? It is just an introduction. Pengenalan. So we know that I have no focus. Then what to do? Continue. Lah. Don't waste time, Mama. Correct? So how ini demikian kerana? This sentence, kerana, oh, it means it is a hurayan. Do I need to pay attention? No need. This is only hurayan. Lepas tu, malahan. Malahan means moreover. Means you top up additional. Yeah, it is something too much, okay? It is another hurayan. And then continue dalam hal ini, in this sense, uh, in this case, uh, Malaysia telah memanfaatkan uh, sebagai destinasi. Okay, they said Malaysia already fully utilize it. It is just telling me, oh, Malaysia use it. Another hurayan. Well, teacher, wasting my time, huh? Yeah, lo. Thanks. Continue. Uh, antara keunikan yang terdapat. Hey, teacher, since there is one keunikan, all right? So we have one keunikan, ma. Then is this our focus? My dear, you don't know, right? You know what to do? Keunikan. You write down the keyword that you think it is. Huh? Then you write number. Mm. Keunikan pertama. If later I have second keunikan, I'll write keunikan kedua. Then it will become my focus straight away. Okay? But if there is no second easy pop-up, it won't be my focus. Okay? This is the reason why I ask you to analyze sentence by sentence so that you don't miss out any focus because you are the one who found focus. Nobody tell you the correct answer. Okay? Then next one. How ini mampu menarik which is the explanation for your keunikan? So it's hurayan. Can I? Then continue. Oleh itu, kita perlu berusaha untuk blah, blah, blah. Yang ni, remember our ayat penegas just now that I mentioned in our writing. Hmm. Di pendahulan. Ayat penegas. Okay, your keyword part. Then continue. Teacher, pendahulan seems nothing. Huh? I don't know. Then continue my second paragraph. Do I have additional point for the unit then, or I have new focus? Let's check. Dalam konteks ini, in this context, ah, kandungan. 
terdapat beberapa faktor. I want to ask, teacher, there is faktor work. Does it count as my focus? I want to ask you, does it count as my focus factor? It seems yes, my right, Daniel? How sure you are? Mm. Yes, Indy, how sure you are? I wish to know how sure you all can tell me. It is my focus for sure. 100% was in How that? Which word? Which word? Thanks, Mr. Paul. Thanks. Yes. Sinning is not because of FCUK. It's just because the only word in my mm, paragraph that told me it is 100% my first focus. Thanks, Sanjana. Terima kasih. It's just because of this one word. Beberapa. It means I have more than one answer for factor for sure. Automatically, my first focus. Ah, teacher, are you sure? Hundred percent. Then let's check, lor. Ah, since you are not so confident, ma. Then let's check. So, uh, dekat mana ni? Terdapat beberapa faktor mendorong kemasukan. Mendorong ni has support ah, encourage ah. Mendorong kemasukan pelancongan ke negara kita termasuklah. So since we are not sure, right? So we just write F one lah, huh? Since we are not sure, is it focus on lah? F one first, okay? What is F ah? Faktor, bukan fokus ah. Next one, antara kemudahan. Oh, sorry, teacher. This is example. So, yang ni bukan idea. Yang ni merupakan contoh. Maksudnya, teacher, no more focus lah. Continue to read. Next one, pada masa yang sama, kemudahan membeli belah yang disediakan juga menggalakkan. Oh, oh, cikgu. Yang ni juga menggalakkan pelancong berkunjung ke Malaysia. Oh. Ya, loh. Yang ni merupakan F2 lah. Hmm. Okay. Yang pertama, pengangkutan. Yang kedua, membeli belah. So, I have minimum two isi my right. This is my focus. Now, for those who are so blur, let's let you know one thing. Right now, focus pertama is faktor mendorong kemasukan Basically, you know, right, the answer, copy-paste from passive. No need to rethink, uh, no need to do anything, just to analyze. Mm. Then, teacher, only one idea. No, we would have a minimum of two focus. Minimum uh, of two focus. Focus two, teacher, how do I get my focus two? Keep reading uh, till you find your uh, focus two. Understand? Then you might be very curious then would i have more focus yes yes you might have more focus minimum we will have two focus maximum we will have four focus later i will do the max calculation for you ah no worry so minimum two focus yang ni minimum can i then do I do together with you for all? No, 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 no. Don't waste time. Yeah, answer provided. Then now only I want to tell you what to do. Can you see four perenggan? I only have two focus right now. Only two, my right? Where is my another two paragraph? M move to next page, ah, my dear. In exam, right? Bahan pertama, bahan kedua. Also, you need to find out the uh, answer one. Okay? First and second uh, material also, we need to get the answer. Yes. Then how do we write? Pendahuluan. How to write ah uh, is a bit different from your PT three. Pendahuluan. Rumusan. Membincangkan. If you never follow format, zero mark. Mm. Your teacher is um very nice because they want you to remember your mistake forever. So if you uh, level follow for match you with zero mark, yeah? So, membincangkan apa? Focus pertama dan focus kedua. Okay? Can? Mm. No other way, just this way. Yes. Lepas tu, your EC, which means your EC, this is perenggan pertama, uh, EC pertama, yeah? Hmm. Ijo, eight easy lah. Bukan eight bahan. Wait, wait, wait. Ijo, eight easy. Scare me, are you? So, easy, focus pertama. Which is F1, ah. Eh? So, how? Straight away, copy, paste, F1. Termasuk lah. 
then your EC pertama, full stop. Seterusnya. Then EC kedua, full stop. And continue. And my dear, do you remember just now our minimum? How many points did I select? Did I tell you um, that how many points I need to consider as one focus? Minimum, two point. And our maximum is six points. Teacher, why? Leh? Because my next paragraph of EC, next paragraph of EC, yeah, focus, kedua, my F2. How to write F2, leh, teacher? F2 termasuk lah. Teacher, copy paste only ah, the entire focus. Yes, my dear. That's why this rumusan is very easy to score provided you don't, uh, not to say you don't, provided you follow format. Yeah, provided you don't skip the sentences. Yeah, then you can get full score actually. A lot of them 28, 29, 28, 29 because why? Sorry to say that you cannot get 30 marks. Yeah. Yes, an unsound rule. So F2, termasuk lah, 1, then selain itu, you can use any penanda wacana, okay? And main thing is, 1.1 one one sentence. Okay, ah? then continue, continue, continue. Same thing, minimum, 2 point. Maximum, 6 points. Then, did you do it, are you doing your max calculation? Total, how many points do we, uh, or are we supposed to find? Jumla, lapan isi. And then each point, two marks. So we have about 16 marks. Enam belas maka. Then pendahulan eh, teacher, two mark. Penutup, another two mark. <coughs> Dah ya? Penutup. Teacher, you got format for penutup ah? Of course. Three words. Kesimpulannya. Then, harus. Supaya. But I need to emphasize one thing. This one is in terms of ayat passive. You all know what is ayat passive, right? Ayat passive, it means your kata kerja must be in bohan D. Teacher, how le? How do we start le, teacher? Kesimpulannya, copy paste your topic. Like our topic is industry pelancongan, right? So kesimpulannya, industry pelancongan, harus, this one is our tindakan, but must be in bohan D, blah, blah, blah. It is a must. Okay? And no need wata. For this one, no need wata. Then supaya. Then our kesan positive lah. Mm. Just like this. Okay? I give you an example ah. Mm. Don't cry first, okay? Kesimpulannya. Uh, my dear, if you miss out on... Um, any keyword, minus one mark each. Mm. Then if you miss out, two straight away, zero for penutup. Can I? So kesimpulannya, industry pelancongan, harus dikembangkan supaya what is the purpose? Huh? What is the effect? This is what I told the previous class as well. Supaya economy or, or supaya dapat merangsangkan economy. Okay? Supaya economy negara. I can write uh, berkembang pesat lah. Berkembang pesat, it means grow in a rapid way. Okay? So, topic, kata kerja, tindakan, and then our kesan, okay? Which is our effect. 
Can I? So, penutup two marks. So, pendahuluan penutup formula. And then, our EC focus two paragraphs, total eight point. Then, teacher, what if uh, I don't write two, I write three can. Uh, and as long as your, fo your focus, uh, example, uh, must F1 plus F2, two, three, four, five, six also can. Just like this, total eight point. Mm. It's either two plus six or five, four, five plus three also okay. Just that make sure you remember the rule, minimum two, maximum six. Mm. Then anything in between also okay. Don't write nine or ten points. Main is because uh, words is not enough. Yeah, number of words, tak cukup lah. Mm. Then what if, what if teacher... I got three focus, then how? Ah? Three focus means do your max, okay? If there is three focus, ah, F1, F2, F3, three focus, my right? That eight points in total, my huh? Minimum two marks, my, two points, my right? So you can write two, two, four, or three, two, three, anything, la, as long as my minimum is two. Or four, two, two. Whatever combination, minimum is two. Okay? Settle? Then that's why you won't get like five. Yeah. So maximum is four. Yes. Settle? Then, uh, so um, should be like this only for Rumusan. Mm, Paul cannot, if there is like three focus and you only write two, write two focus minus mark. Because why? You are missing the two points. So you are losing four marks. Yeah. So that's why if there is three focus and you only found two, it means for sure your rumusan won't get very high. Okay. So four, three focus, four focus. If you cannot find it, sorry to say that losing mark for sure. Mm, that's why I ask you everything. You have to go sentence by sentence and analyze. Otherwise, um, I won't be so... um typical and mean in terms of rumusan yeah so everything that's why i said you will focus rumusan for more than 30 minutes yeah and i never encourage you to do rumusan first because it takes a lot of time then you miss out the front part which is easy one to score so always follow the sequence in answering question okay uh, Tisha, what need to write the kata kunci for every easy uh, no, 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 no need, no need, no need, Emily. Yeah, for EC, right, as long as the first sentence, you have your keyword, you have your topic, then continue as long as you have the main what up, then topic will do. Yeah, no need keep repeating the kata kunci. Otherwise, not enough of words all. Mm. Okay, just make sure every sentence, your what up subject must be there. Ah, yes, correct, Izo. Rumusan, just follow the format will do. Mm, especially for opening and ending. And then Emily, after Penana Wachana, can you start the career? Cannot. Yep, this is the idea. A lot of students, uh, they always say, teacher, uh, easy, very easy one. Ma. We just uh, copy the point. Uh. But what if my point start from gutter career? Then it's wrong. Why? Because in BM, you all know our sentence structure, right? We cannot start from gutter career unless it is an instruction. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll always start from a subject. And it's a subject is always kata nama. You all know, right? Subject in our subject predicate, subject is always either orang, benda, perkara. So for these cases, it's our topic law, industry pelancongan. Or sometimes it's that like it start from human, kita haruslah. Or benda kemudahan pengangkutan, kemudahan membeli belah. Mm. This is the idea. Never start from kata kerja. Yeah, okay? Understand, uh? just all this um, minor mistake, you all be careful will do. Mm. So everything settled, paper one, paper two, fully exam. Mm. So you just need to do more BM paper plus reading, then your BM is not a problem. Yeah. Understand? Can I? So settle that. Yang other class pada hari ESO, I will see you tomorrow. Yang the other class settle for those exam um after June, you can read uh read blah. you can watch the recorded video in TTC YouTube. Um, how to get the link? Go to TTC YouTube or just follow TTC IG. Then you will know what to do. Yeah. Okay. Then so I will uh, see normal human tomorrow. Mm, bye.
Jumpa lagi. Selamat malam. Thank you. Terima kasih. Jumpa lagi. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.